it seems like you know, we think they make more mistakes than uh, give them what they're calling. So, um, you know, back and forth on both sides, and and you know, something that we have to we have to deal with every game, and not something we can control is, is how the referees are going to call things. You're coming into this week's game against Ithaca. They took a loss last week against Union. Essentially, this is a playoff game for them. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you looking for now? And they've also got a quarterback that you can remember from last year. Yes. Yeah, so uh, yeah, their quarterback is uh, is a grad transfer that's uh, uh, I guess taking graduate classes or taking undergraduate classes or graduate classes, and I'm not exactly sure, but uh, you know, it's transferred uh, from from Brockport to Ithaca. Has had a, a really good season for himself. Uh, um, you know, uh, when we watch him on film, he's doing a lot of the same things that we saw at Brockport. Uh, you know, has uh, a really good cast around him, you know, running the football, offense, blind receivers. Um, so he's, uh, you know, he's the real deal. Um, you know, we see him uh, as being a very similar type of player that we saw in the, uh, the Brockport game uh, last year. And, uh, you know, quite honestly, we're going to have a, gonna have our hands full. He's a, you know, because he's a, he's a dual threat. He's a runner and a thrower and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we've got some things to mix up coverage, to, to, to give him different looks. Uh, maybe show him one thing, play another thing. Um, but he's, like I said, he's a good player, and you know, good players always, always find a way to, to, you know, to, to, you know, make themselves uh, impact the game. And it's going to be senior week, the last home game for the seniors on this team. Yeah. What did you think about this class? Well, you know, we. Uh, we always dedicate our season to the seniors, to our senior class. We've got 16 seniors who, who will be um, playing their, their last regular season home game uh, here for RPI. In uh, this senior class, uh, I believe, has, has the opportunity to go out with the second or third uh, most wins in program history. Uh, has a chance to play in the most games in program history. Uh, this was a senior class that we had, uh, we have a couple of legacies on there, a couple of guys that, uh, um, younger brothers of that I had coached, so I guess that tells you how old I am already. Uh, but um, it, it's, it, it, this, is a, this is a really talented um, senior class, a senior class that was important uh, in, in building our culture, the culture of our program. Um, you've got uh, some amazing leaders, you've got uh, really talented uh, players, um, guys that have played a lot of football for us, um, so it's, uh, you know, we want to send them out on a high note and, uh, you know, like I said, we dedicate our season always to the seniors and, you know, these are guys that have been, you know, through the battles for, for years and, um, you know, some of these guys that, uh, you know, are very strong personality guys, uh, guys that are, are great in the, in, the, in the weight room, the locker room, on the football field, you, you know, you uh, they're guys that you're you're definitely going to miss their presence. Thanks a lot, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks. And we are live once more here at the East Campus Stadium on the campus of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York, where we are nearing the start of today's game. They just had the coin toss. Ithaca won the toss. They are deferring their selection to the second half. And so RPI will be getting the ball. And very shortly we'll be having the National Anthem. And I mentioned right before I went on the air, Yancey, uh, for Ithaca, it's essentially a playoff game. If they want to make the NCAAs, they have got to win out. Right. Uh, a couple of factors going in RPI's favor, perhaps, here as they try to post their sixth win of the year and and complete a winning season, at least, uh, in a season that otherwise we're not, they're not going to the NCAA playoffs. But a couple of things. They're playing at home. The engineers have been pretty darn good at home, unbeaten. We'll take a break. <laughs>
And as we mentioned, the engineers are unbeaten here at home, 5-0. and oh. That said, let's face it, they haven't faced, hosted a team of this caliber here in Troy, not like the high-flying uh, Bombers. Second factor that might have to consider, and we'll see how this plays out, Ithaca next week is playing its arch rival, Cortland. And they're not just playing it out in the Finger Lakes, they're playing it at Giant Stadium or MetLife Stadium in the Meadowlands. And they're going to be playing before. As a Jets fan, it is not Giant Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and they're going to be playing in front of 40,000 people next week, so it's a big deal. It's going to be the biggest Division III uh, crowd at a game, I think, ever. Um, is it possible that Ithaca is looking ahead? It's not out of the realm. It's not out of the realm, but we will see as we proceed here. Again, Engineers 5-0 and at home, 0-3 and on the road. Uh, they have had five straight winning seasons, and they're going to have to win one of these final two against the two top teams in the Liberty League to be able to keep that streak going today facing the high-flying Bombers. You are listening to 91.5 FM WRPI Troy with Engineer Football from the East Campus Stadium in Troy, New York. Kurt Stutt, Yancey Roy on the call for you today. RPI will be getting the ball. I mentioned before the National Anthem, they, the Ithaca Bombers won the coin toss to further selection. RPI will be taking the ball. Ithaca will be kicking off. It'll be Ithaca going right to left. RPI left to right across your radio dial in quarter number one. It is sunny. Few clouds in the sky in the 30s here in Troy. Everybody is bundled up except for the players, basically. Everybody else, they're all bundled up for today's game. 35 degrees at kickoff with a 10-mile-an-hour wind from the south. Bahamandi kicks the ball away, and it's taken by Munoz Watts at the 8-yard line. 10, 15 to the 20, 25. Munoz Watts weaves his way through the 30, and he is down around the 33. Uh, 32, they'll call it, and that's where RPI will start out their first possession of the game. It'll be key for the engineers to get off to a good start here against the Ithaca defense. Uh, RPI comes into this game, as we mentioned, 2-2 two and two in the league. Uh, one of those losses to Hobart on the road at Geneva. That Hobart team was shut out by this Ithaca team, 34 to nothing. So the engineers are going to have their challenges trying to move the ball, and we'll see how they get off to on their first drive. Maranopoulos hands off to Scaglione on first down, and he gets across the 35, 36 to the 37. Should mention we went off the air. Before we went off the air last week, the Ithaca Union game was still ongoing. I did mention they lost. That was a 31 to 21 loss to Union last week because of that Union clinched the NCAA tournament bid. Regardless of what Union does in the next two games, they are in the NCAAs. They are still undefeated, and they are up against Utica today. That's a 1 o'clock start for the Dutchman. Gain of five on that play for RPI. It'll be a second and five at the 37-yard line. Ithaca lining up in a four-man front, two linebackers, and five defensive backs spread out to cover the RPI receivers. Marinopoulos fakes the handoff. He's going to throw. Lombardi has it, running along the 35-yard line. Now it turns upfield to the 40, to the 45. Lombardi's out beyond the 45. They'll put him at the 46, and that is a first down for RPI. And that was all Lombardi and a couple of blockers out there, including uh, McDonald, because he caught the ball only about one yard across the line of scrimmage and ran basically to the left sideline for the rest of that in the first down. Uh, so far, three plays, including the kickoff, and we've seen a, a bunch of missed tackles uh, early on here for Ithaca. Don't know if it's you know anything to do with the weather, but we've seen RPI break tackles on every play so far. First and 10 RPI at their own 46. No score, 13-34 to go here in quarter number one. Marinopoulos fakes the handoff to Scaglione. He's going to throw downfield. Looking for Lombardi, and that is knocked away. Lombardi in double coverage there. Uh, the ball gets knocked away, and it goes incomplete. He had a step on both defensive backs, and the ball hung up just a little bit, allowing Ithaca to come back and cover him. And there was contact mm, simultaneously right when the ball arrived. I frankly wouldn't have been surprised to see a, a pass interference call on that. It, it looked to me like there might have been contact right before the ball arrived, but uh, goes as no foul. Incomplete on first down. Second and 10 RPI at the 46. Meichlin goes in motion. And this is a handoff. Scaglione takes it, finds a hole, and Scaglione gets into Ithaca territory until he makes it to the 45-yard line. There's a fake to a misdirection where Meislin took off around the left end, and some of the defenders for Ithaca headed out to cover him. That left a gap in the middle that Scaglione was able to take advantage of. Rumis had to move up and make the tackle on that one for Ithaca. 
Third down and about one at the Ithaca 45 yard line. McDonald in motion to the left. Two wideouts on the right for RPI. Direct snap to Meisland. Meisland takes it, runs straight ahead, and he gets to the 42, and that'll be another RPI first down. That's a bread and butter play for the engineers. Anytime you have a short yardage situation, they have Meisland line up. He's normally a, a wingback or wide receiver. He lines up right behind the center, gets the snap, and just looks for some sort of opening to try to get two or three yards, which is what he got on this carry. George Ranopoulos is the quarterback for RPI. Joe Scaglione is the tailback. Wide receivers are Nick Smith and Vinnie McDonald. The slot receivers are Mark Meishlin and Malik Kelly. The line up front, Luke Koschel, Rick Domboski, Thomas Olawson, Jacob Grant, and Sean Gibbons. First and 10, RPI at the Ithaca 42. 12-10 to go here, first quarter, no score in Troy. Scaglione takes the handoff on first down. Goes up just a little bit to the left of center and makes it down to the 37, and that's a pickup of uh, five yards for RPI on first down. RPI's running game doing pretty well so far. Yeah, good work up front uh, among the uh, players who open that uh, gap there. Rick Denboski, a sophomore offensive lineman, able to just, again, open a gap just left of center. Scaglione doing a good job of finding the pocket and moving the ball four or five yards at a time. Second and five, RPI at the 37 of Ithaca. Ithaca in their road white with dark blue, dark blue numbers. Very easy to read numbers for the Bombers. Gaglione takes another handoff, weaves his way through the line. That's another first down for RPI, and he has, makes it to the 26-yard line. Again, the, the offensive line doing a terrific job in this opening drive. That one kind of going off right tackle. Most of the plays have, have gone up the middle so far. This one going a little bit wide, enough for a first down for Scaglione. Little over 11 to go here, first quarter. No score, RPI, first possession of the game. We would like to thank the Rensselaer Union. They provide the funding for WRPI and all the club-related activity of the Institute. And that includes WRPI's coverage of engineer football, hockey, and baseball. First and 10, RPI at the 26-yard line. Marinopoulos out of the shotgun, four wide out formation. Meisler now moves in towards the center. Fakes the handoff, Marinopoulos throws, finds Meishlin complete to the five. Meishlin on his feet, and he's in for the touchdown. Gets the ball across the plane. It, he lost it after he hit the ground, but it was already across the plane, and RPI takes an early 6-0 lead. And yeah, just right at the pylon on the far side, left sideline. And what a terrific start here for the engineers. And you know, we, uh, we mentioned it at the top. It, Ithaca is a team with, that's been nationally ranked all year has terrific credentials. They're in the running, perhaps still for an NCAA bid, but they're coming off uh, a deflating loss where they were knocked out of the conference chase. Christian's kick is up and good. That's seven nothing RPI. I think that was up and good, right? Yes, yes. the signal was good. Seven nothing RPI. And uh, not only, you know, losing to Union College, which means they were out of the running for the, the conference title, uh, but next week they're playing their arch rival Cortland and they're playing it at MetLife Stadium in the Meadowlands uh, before 40,000 people. And we, we talked about that in the opening, Kurt. Is it is it possible, is it out of the realm that this could be one of the so-called trap games for Ithaca, uh, where they're looking ahead to the next game? A at the same time, you mentioned this is, if they want to make the playoffs, this is a playoff game. They can't afford another loss and still hope to get to postseason. That said, that, that first drive was uh, all RPI. There was, there was uh, not a single play for a loss. Every, every carry moved the ball forward, and this is an RPI team that has struggled on the ground, but they really ran it effectively there. And a couple of terrific uh, individual plays, uh, Lombardi on a, a little swing out pass and Meislin for the touchdown. And, we're not even five minutes into this, and RPI is up 7-0. RPI's running game played well against Buffalo State last week, but the two prior games, St. Lawrence and Hobart, uh, it, it was just not there, and it's not where they needed to be. Low kick from Christian, taken at about the 12-yard line, out to the 25, and that was Clifford getting out to about the 30. I don't know where they're going to they're gonna place them right around the 30, 31 yard line is where they're going to place them. So Ithaca starts out at their own 31, their first possession of the game. They'll be going right to left, and in this case, that means with the wind. We've got a, a little bit of a steady wind, 10 miles an hour out of the south. Uh, I believe you mentioned the Ithaca is in the road uniforms, white jerseys, navy numbers, navy pants, navy helmets. RPI in there, all black here on senior day. Black uh, with white numbers, red and white trim. 
Germanario is the quarterback for Ithaca. On uh, first down, pass is batted away, and that goes incomplete. Just batted down by Conquo. Amici Conquo, he got stood up by his blocker, but he saw Germanario raise the arm to throw the pass, and so he just went up with both arms and just batted that straight down. For those of you familiar with RPI football, German Area was on the Brockport team last year. He is a graduate transfer, although in Division III you are free to transfer at will. It's not like Division I. You can just simply switch colleges, and if you have eligibility, you can play for the other school. It's not the same as Division I. Second down, Ithaca at the 31-yard line pass. That is complete out to the 40-41, and that should be a first down based on the forward progress. Uh, that was Gladney on the reception. I think it was Gladney on the reception yeah. for Ithaca. Yeah, Will Gladney, and uh, expect to call his name and number a lot today. He and Andrew Vito, the two top receivers for Ithaca, coming into this game, they're averaging eight, uh, combined about eight receptions per game apiece and over 100 yards receiving each game this year for Ithaca. Ten to go here in the first quarter. Seven nothing. RPI on top. Ithaca first and ten at the 41. They're going to go on the ground this time, and they'll make it out to the 44-yard line. Isaiah DeHaiti yeah. on the carry. Uh, a burly little uh, build of a running back. 5'9", 215. Just muscled his way forward for three yards there. Second down and seven as the ball's at the 44 for the Bombers. Two receivers left, one to the right. To Haiti takes the handoff. To Haiti makes his way across the 50, and he's close to another Ithaca first down. Ithaca most gets most of its yards uh, through the air, averaging about 330 yards per game. But they like to run it too. Uh, they, uh, if you look at their pass, or rather their play selection, it's only about 60-40 in favor of the pass. First and ten, Ithaca at the 49. This is going to be a tackle for loss as uh, German Ario was rolling out to his right and he gets caught and that's gonna be a loss of five yards for Ithaca. Terrific double team action there by uh, Magnus Womble coming from the right side, chasing German Ario from behind. And when he tried to get to the corner, there was Conquo who just leveled him and then got an assist from Womble to bring him down. Second and 15 at the 46 for Ithaca. German Ario is looking left. He had three receivers on that side pass. That is complete. And this will be down to the RPI 43-yard line as Cooney had a, there was a big gap there between Cooney and Battle, who was his defender. Yeah, what you've seen so far, we're just early here on this first drive, but so far the engineers defensive secondary giving a lot of room, a lot of respect to the Ithaca receivers. They're playing way off of them. Uh, and there, you know, there's a lot of room to complete a pass for German Ario if he has time to get the ball to his receiver. Third down and five at the 44-yard line. They picked up 10, five plus the well, one of the loss, then five originally. And now a Battle comes in. Does he get the ball? It looks to me like Battle intercepted the ball intended for Cooney, and RPI gets the first turnover of the game. That ball, that pass uh, was telegraphed by German Ariel, and that's what allowed uh, Blake Battle, number 13, a sophomore, to come in and intercept that ball. He was playing back off the receiver, like we said, but German Ariel, uh, stepped and looked to his right, looked at his one receiver the entire way, gave Battle enough time to step in front for, for about a, two seconds there, and why the, the call was a, a bit delayed as they were both struggling for the ball. Each of them had their hands on it, but eventually Battle able to yank it away, and RPI with the first big turnover this game and terrific field position starting their second drive at their own 45. 8.04 to go here, first quarter, RPI 7, Ithaca nothing. First and 10 RPI at their own 45-yard line. On the ground, Burnett crosses the field, 50, and Burnett's going to be forced down near the 47 of Ithaca, and that's a pickup of eight for RPI. You know, if you're the receiver in that situation, you want to pull the guy to the ground. If you're both fighting over the ball, you want to kill the play because that goes to the offense. I, I think Battle had really control of it for the most part. Uh, the receiver, Cooney, tried to reach in and take it away, but it was it was... It was more or less battles ball all the way. Now this mentioned Burnett on that last run. He got the handoff. The play was designed to go up the middle. Saw there was nothing there, and he just sprinted out to his right towards the sideline. Ended up getting nine yards. A, a, a nice read for Burnett. Second down and one for RPI. Uh, fake the handoff. It was a direct snap to Lombardi. He's got it to the near side, and he's going to get a first down. He had trouble getting past the last defender there for Ithaca. 
that tripped him up and he ended up down at the 38. There's also a flag on the play on the far side. Fake to hand off to Burnett going left and it took most of the uh, Ithaca defenders that way to the far sideline and uh, Lombardi able to just kind of sprint off right end and enough of a gap to get a first down. They're picking up the flag so there'll be no call on that play and then a first down for the engineers at the Bombers 38. Again, first quarter, seven minutes to go. RPI up seven to nothing, moving the ball effectively all through this first quarter. That was Brenner on the tackle there that prevented Lombardi from getting a bigger gain on that play. First and 10 RPI at the Ithaca 38. Marinopoulos on play action, throws to Meishlin, flag comes out as Meishlin is tackled by Daly at the line of scrimmage. That was at the far side where Nick Smith, one of the wide receivers, number 13, was tangled up with Anthony Robinson. So I don't know if it had to do with contact out there or if it was a, uh, or if it's a call on offsides because it did come from the side judge. So it is offsides against Ithaca, RPI will take the penalty. Which and the reason I didn't think it was offsides at first is usually the offside, the flag comes out immediately, and that was a little bit delayed, so I thought it might be the, the tie-up with uh, Robinson and Smith. But it goes RPI's way, first and five here. First and five, RPI at the Ithaca 33. Engineers up 7-0 in the first quarter. Two receivers on the right, and now Smith is going to move over to the left. Direct snap to Lombardi. He's going to pitch it to McDonald. McDonald's looking for Meislin near the goal line. He caught it, and Meislin is in No, He's inside the one. Meislin goes down inside the one. It'll be first and goal RPI. Well, that play worked to perfection because no one went with Meislin, and he was about four or five yards behind the defensive back. Uh, McDonald is not... Uh, a quarterback by nature, so he doesn't have the arm of Marinopoulos. If he had a little more zip on that, would have been an easy touchdown. Direct snap to Lombardi. He is in for the touchdown. So Marinopoulos not behind center. Lombardi takes a direct snap. He goes left. He's in for the TD. It's 13-0 RPI. And what a terrific start. Two drives, two touchdowns, and the engineers, have, again, have not gone backwards on any play yet in, the, in their first two possessions. Going back to the uh, sort of sort of flea flicker, flicker the halfback pass. Uh, Meislin was way behind the defenders, but the ball hung up a little bit, which is why he had to wait for it, and he was tackled at the one. Christian's extra point attempt is up and good. 14 to nothing, RPI leads with 5.52 to go in the first quarter. Everything the engineer is doing right now is working, and especially uh, their ground game occurred. 51 yards on the ground so far, 67 in the air. They're using a, a variety of, of misdirections uh, on the ground. Uh, Scaglione and, and Burnett doing a good job of getting to the ball and looking at the line and reading and looking for the pocket. Um, and that said, they're mixing up the pass plays as well. They've mostly been going short little uh, crossing routes here and there, but they've also, as we've seen, uh, not afraid to go to the trick bag on that halfback pass that got them all the way down to the one. A number of snaps already in this first quarter where Marinopoulos didn't get the snap. Right, again, misdirection. Uh, either Lombardi or Meislin lining up uh, in the backfield and getting a direct snap, including on that one-yard touchdown run by Lombardi. They've used it in short yardage situations where all they need is one or two yards, and it's, and it's usually good for two or three or four. Christian getting ready to kick off. RPI with a 14 to nothing lead. Another low kick. And it'll be taken by Clifford at the 15-yard line to the 20, 25, 30, 35. And Clifford didn't get past the 35-yard line. And RPI is claiming they have the ball. We'll have to see. The officials are coming in to look at this. And yes, RPI gets a fumble recovery on the kickoff. And right now, everything is just going wrong for Ithaca. Defensive uh, lineman C.J. Shoemaker uh, running off the field with the ball. I don't know if he was the one who um, came up with it in the pile, but he ran off of, out of the scrum with the ball, and the engineers are gonna come up with a third possession here in the first quarter, this time starting from the Bombers 34. Again, I Ithaca is one of the best teams in the nation, They've been ranked in the top 25 all year, in the running still for the NCAA playoffs, but they had a defeating loss, a, de a deflating loss last week to Union. They face their arch rival in a huge game next week. We were wondering if this might set up well for RPI 
and through the first quarter, it's going that way. Four wide out formation, handoff goes to Munoz Watts. He's got a gain up the middle. That'll be a first down for Munoz Watts, and he's finally stopped at the 22. The engineers offensive line uh, having one of their best first quarters maybe of the season in terms of opening up the running game. In comparison to the last few weeks, this is a vast improvement. Senior day for the engineers, 16 players uh, making their final appearance at home. Uh, also what's at stake is the engineers want to keep their streak of winning seasons alive. So, you know, no playoffs on the line for the engineers, but a, a lot of pride at stake. Marinopoulos, who knows what, goes left. He's got at least five before he gets swarmed under by that Ithaca defense around the 17-yard line. Uh, so a pickup of five on that play. It's uh, again, a little bit of a use of misdirection. You had a receiver on the far left going deep to pull the defenders back that way. Uh, most of the line went to the right, a fake pass to the right, and then a handoff to Munoz Watts going back to the left where there was no defender, at least for the first five or six yards. Fourteen nothing, RPI leads. Four and a half to go here in quarter number one. Second and five at the 17 yard line. And they'll blow this play dead, flag on the play. A lot of movement on either side. We'll see which one gets called for it. RPI is getting called for this. Yep. Um, Ithaca showing a blitz, ran up one of their linebackers right, really quickly uh, right before the snap. And I suppose in reaction, one of the RPI linemen on the left side sort of flinched. Uh, when that occurred, resulting in the illegal procedure penalty. Moves the ball back to the 22 for RPI. It'll be second and 10. It basically wipes out the five yards they gained on first down. Meisler in motion to the right. Mironopoulos has three receivers over there. He's going to pass short to Munoz Watts. 20, 15. Munoz Watts can't get past. Uh, Basically, the last guy there, McDermott, was in front of him. If it hadn't been for McDermott, that would have been a first down and maybe gotten inside the five at that point. Engineers doing a good job of, of running quick patterns for Marinopoulos, and he's getting rid of the ball very quickly before any kind of Ithaca pressure can get to him in the pocket. Munoz watches the running back. Marinopoulos has three wideouts to the right, one to the left. It'll be third down and about one for RPI at the Ithaca 13. Going and against a pretty stiff wind right now. And, and the three wide rights are on the wide side of the field, so a lot of room to operate there. Third down play. Marinopoulos looks, throws, and its flags are going to come out. Holding or pass interference. One of the two, I think, is what's going to happen. Yeah, they're going to call pass interference against Ithaca, so this will be a first down in down at the three? Yeah, it was uh, the pass was intended for Lombardi, and he got the inside angle on number 26, Connor Swain, a defensive back. Swain was beaten by him, and he kind of just wrapped his arm around Lombardi's waist and was caught red-handed by the officials on that one. So they're, the officials said they're putting the ball at the two, and RPI, the ball's right now at the seven. So it's a spot foul. It's 15, or it's supposed to be the spot maximum of 15. So where was the spot? That's the question oh. here. Or, or a, a half the distance situation when you're inside? Well, it's, Weren't it's, they at the it's, if the spot is less than 15, it's the spot. Now they're moving it. I'm trying to think in my mind. Down, I down to the I, two. He was inside the five. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was almost at the goal line. Yeah, so then the ball goes to the two by rule. It is a first and goal RPI at the two. 14 to nothing. RPI leads. 310 to go first quarter. Marinopoulos at quarterback. Gives to Munoz Watts. He gets hit in the backfield, hit in the backfield, but that's not enough. He's in for the touchdown. 20 to nothing. RPI leads. Wow. 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 <laughs> if, you, if you, Kurt, you. <laughs> You know, if anyone had told you that three, well, one of the teams here would score three touchdowns in the first quarter, I think everyone's money would have been on Ithaca. It would the, have been, yes. The, the Bombers, who have been nationally ranked all year, been in the top ten for a good chunk of the year. Uh, and, and RPI has struggled after, like, a terrific start. The engineers 
kind of falling back in the pack and out of the race. Christian's kick is up and good. But they have come out on fire here. As, as, and also, as we mentioned, they are unbeaten here in Troy, 5-0 and on the year. And yeah, they have not played a team of this caliber here at home. Uh, but boy, it's a, maybe it's because it's senior day, maybe because it's a, a little bit of a trap game for Ithaca, but everything working in the engineer's favor, 21 to nothing. And we still got three minutes to go here in the first quarter. And let's review, it was opening kickoff, RPI drove it downfield, then two Ithaca turnovers. Both of those turnovers turned into touchdowns. I am. You cannot ask for more out of RPI at this point. Got the ball, got a touchdown, got two turnovers, got the touchdown. Yeah, that's, that's what you have to do. So the Bombers in a must win. I mean, if they lose this, the NCAAs are out. I mean, they Two lost teams don't make it. Meislin with 58 yards receiving so far in the first quarter. Scaglione, 30 yards on the ground. Uh, Munoz Watts with 19 as well and a touchdown just now. Engineers, eight first downs. Ithaca just two. And as you mentioned, two huge turnovers, an interception and a fumble. Again, a low kick from Christian. He's kicking against the wind at this point. Taken around the 30-yard line out to the 33 and pushed onto the RPI sideline is the return man, who's not listed as a too deep as a return man, but that actually is. Anthony Dededo. Yeah, Dededa. Dededa, yes. Dededa on the return for Ithaca. Now, engineers have a 21-0 lead, but let's make it clear that Ithaca has a high-powered, dangerous offense. Uh, Joe Germanario has thrown for 2,700 yards so far in the season. He's averaging 330 yards a game. Right now he's looking to throw under pressure, tries to get away and loses the ball. He then manages to cover it around the 19-yard line, uh, but that was almost another turnover. And what a first quarter Amici Conquo is having. He came in from his left end position and just sandwiched Germanario and also knocked the ball free. Fortunate bounce for Ithaca's that it, it came all, almost right back into Jeremy Nario's hands. Uh, otherwise, it would have been another turnover deep in Bomber territory. Loss of about 12 yards on that play. Second and 22, Jeremy Nario is under pressure, sacked. Oh my, that's Magnus Womble, yeah. number 90. Back at the 18 yard line, it's actually a loss of one. It is a sack, and that'll set up third and about 24. He, uh, Womble and and Conquo have just been all over the, Ith the Ithaca backfield so far in this first quarter. Four wideouts for German Ario, third and 24. Looking Garcia. to go to the right side. Garcia in the backfield, that is complete, and that's not gonna be anywhere close to a first down. Vito got it, ran out of bounds around the 27, and Ithaca is going to be sending out the front team. Just short of a... Uh, type of a, sh a short screen to the right side to kind of get the Bombers outside of the shadows of the goal post, give their punter a little breathing room, get the ball out to the 27. But yeah, far short of the 42, which is where the Bombers needed to go for a first down. Fallon is out to punt for Ithaca. Boots it away, he's got the wind. Lombardi signals for a fair catch, got hit by his own guy, but he manages to catch the ball at the 38-yard line. Terrific concentration there because, uh, as you mentioned, there was a collision between C.J. Lyons, number 14, who was back there to block with him, and he was trying to fend off an Ithaca player and uh, ended up getting knocked into his own receiver, but great concentration from Lombardi to hang on to the ball. Engineers going to start their fourth drive of the first quarter at their own 38. 21 to nothing, RPI leads with 112 to go in quarter number one. Marinopoulos, three receivers, one, slot, one man in the slot, and he's got one running back on first down. Fake the handoff, Marinopoulos under pressure, he'll get sacked back at the 31 yard line. Um, it's called the 30 actually, so RPI loses eight on that play. It came with a lot of pressure, and it ended up being the defensive back, Michael Rumis, 
making the sack and uh, notable because that will be the first play for a loss for the engineers this afternoon for the, the first time Ithaca was able to get to the quarterback Marinopoulos who's been concentrating on short quick routes uh, and, and getting the rid of the ball quickly that time held the ball a little longer and Ithaca was able to get to him. Second and 18 RPI back at the 30 yard line. This is going to be a running play. Scaglione breaks a couple of tackles, makes it out to the 34 to make it a little bit more reasonable. Uh, third and 14. Well, you know what? He was also fortunate in that he broke a tackle. Uh, one of the Ithaca Bomber players and I, I did not get the name, the number quickly enough. The linebacker came in and blitzed and uh, was able to get in a backfield and get an arm on Scaglione, but he was able to get away and at least make it a positive gain there. Uh, but now we've seen a couple of plays in a row where Ithaca has started to up the pressure and try to get their defenders into the backfield as we get to the end of the first quarter. 21 to nothing, RPI leads here after quarter number one in Troy. Also, we'd like to thank the, we'd like to remind you that WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to WRPI.org and pick up our broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As long as we're sending something out over the air, we'll provide it for you on that feed. That's WRPI.org. Well, we've got a moment also, the Ithaca defense, while they are out there coming, they'll still be out there for this third down play. The line up front has Chris Alexander, Ed Longest, Noah Hill, and John Haddock. Linebackers are Nick Garone and Miles Haynes. The safeties are Joey Filippi and Cade McDermott and three cornerbacks. You've got Anthony Robinson, Kyrie Brown, and Michael Rumis. We take a look at the first quarter stats, and as you imagine, it's all RPI. First downs, engineers eight, bombers two. Rushing yards, engineers 66, bombers minus nine. And of course, that includes uh, sack yardage as in, their, um, in that total. Passing yards, engineers 76, and the bombers 29. So total yards. Engineers 142 in that first quarter and Ithaca just 20. Starting of the second quarter, third down and 14 for RPI. The scoreboard is wrong. It's third and 14 at the 34 for the Engineers. Going right to left, Ithaca left to right across your radio dial. Marinopoulos will get sacked back at the 22. He did not see that coming and by that I mean Haddock. Yeah, the, the defensive end coming in, uh, number 93, senior captain for Ithaca. And now let's take note of this, Kurt, in case this starts a new trend. Uh, and here at the start of the second, three straight plays for the engineers, three straight plays where Ithaca came in with a lot of defensive pressure, blitzing where they could, and they each time getting to the all RPI player in the backfield, two sacks and uh, one short rushing gain, but noticeable that three straight plays, more pressure and more success by the Ithaca defense. Montreal to punt, Anderson is back waiting for the kick. He's gonna have trouble seeing this in the sun and he's going to wisely get away from the ball. Uh, he, he had trouble seeing that, it bounced in front of him. RPI is gonna let this roll, they're gonna try and wave it on and it'll be stopped at the 17 yard line. So a good kick for Montreal. Wise decision by Anderson. If you, if you have trouble seeing it at this point, just, just let it run. And Ithaca will take the ball at their own 17. We've got about 20 yards of roll on that. That thing hit about at the 37, rolls all the way down to the 17. As you mentioned, the, the Bombers now will be going against the wind, engineers with the wind. Uh, bombers going left to right. It's a chilly day, about 35 degrees at kickoff and about a 10 mile an hour wind blowing from right to left. German Ario with three wide receivers. Wants to throw, finds a man. That's complete to 25, close to the 27. It was Gladney on the reception. They're gonna have him at the 26. So that'll be a pickup of nine for the Bombers. Gladney came into this game with 60 receptions on the season. That's uh, about seven and a half per game, but was held to just one catch in that first quarter. Second and one for the Bombers. German Ariel wants to throw, gets rid of it, and Gladney's got it at the 30. Vaults over one man and loses the ball, but it goes out of bounds. And they'll say he was down. They'll say the ball came out when he hit, and he was down at the 34-yard line. Good pressure by the RPI defensive line. German Ariel had to get rid of that ball a little bit quickly, more quickly than he wanted to. So it's a first and 10 for Ithaca at their own 34. 13, 15 to go. First half, RPI 21, Ithaca nothing.
at the 34-yard line. Germanario hands off. This running play is uh, maybe going to get them a yard by the Haiti if they're lucky. Yeah, they'll get, well, a half a yard, call it. Met there just across the line of scrimmage by Grant Tragney, one of the engineers, to, uh, linebackers, along with a couple of other teammates. Joe Germanario is the quarterback for Ithaca. The running back, Kendall Anderson. The wide receivers are Will Gladney, Andrew Vito, and Jacob Cooney. The tight end is Austin Hedgian. And here we go on second down and about nine. The ball goes to Anderson, and Anderson is down at about the 38 as he ran towards the Ithaca sideline, which is on the far side of the field. And that's about three yards, and he'll make a third down and six. The key for the engineers' defense so far, uh, just barely into the second quarter, has been their defensive line. They've really, when the ball gets snapped, you can see the surge going backwards into the Ithaca backfield on most of the plays that the Bombers have tried to run so far. Kyle Berna, Andrew Tassani, Michael Conley, Jake Villanueva, and Brendan Martin are that line. Third down, Germanario looks to throw, doesn't find anything, starts to run with the ball. He'll get a first down, and he runs out of bounds at the 46, and that'll be a first down for Ithaca. Two things happened on that play uh, for Ithaca. One, they had a receiver that was behind all of the RPI defensive backs back at about the RPI 35, but because the engineer's defensive line got so much pressure on German Ariel, he wasn't able to spot the receiver, and he just had to take off with the ball and scramble. Uh, was able to pick up a first down. First and 10, Ithaca at their own 46. 11 and a half to go, first half. RPI 21, Ithaca nothing. Three receivers to the right for a German Ariel. One man in the backfield, tight end on the left for the Bombers. German Ariel fakes the handoff. His pass is batted down. By Conquo again, that's his second deflection coming off the left uh, side as a defensive end. He, uh, Conquo and Womble and all the other uh, defensive linemen having a terrific first half here for the engineers. Second and 10 for Ithaca, ball still at the 46. Germany are fakes another handoff, looking downfield. Find somebody, yes, that's gonna be in LPI territory. Ball comes loose, covered, and now they're gonna rule it's incomplete. They're going to rule incomplete. I think that was Vito who got it. It was. Mm -hmm. Vito got it. He had it, but he didn't, as they say, do a football move. So as he got hit and lost the ball, they'll rule it an incomplete pass. He had found a seam in between the RPI defenders and had made the catch. And, uh, you know, uh, it looked like he had the ball for at least a count or two. But uh, Gutowski, defensive, Joey Gutowski, the defensive back for the engineers and others, to hit him there immediately. And he coughed it up. Making it third and long now for the Bombers. Third and 10 at the 46. Four wideouts. The running back will stay into block. Germanario throws a wild pass along the sidelines, and that's knocked away. And a flag's going to come out for pass interference. I think this is going to be pass interference against a Ithaca. Pro I mean, against RPI. I mean, RPI, sorry, me. RPI. That's what I meant. Yeah. Yes, that's what they're calling. One of those un, sort of hard, uh, unfortunate plays for the defenders in that uh, German Ariel's ball was just kind of a, a, a dying duck up there, wobbly and under through the wide receiver. So what happens? The wide receiver stops, plants, and come, tries to come back to the ball, and the defensive back kind of got tangled up and ends up getting flagged for pass interference. It'll be 15 yards. Ball will go to the 39 of RPI for a first and 10 Ithaca. 11.06 to go, first half, RPI 21, Ithaca nothing. Germanario on first down pass. That is complete to Gladney, and he is out at the 30 yard line. Up oh, 30, actually 29. They're going to move the chains. They'll give him that yard. It'll be a first down again for Ithaca. Just a quick little, like, seven yards and out for Gladney, and the RPI cornerbacks playing well off the receivers here for Ithaca uh, and that that short out pass is right there for German Ario all through the first half here. 10.40 to go first half first and 10 Ithaca at the 29 Ithaca trailing by 21 German Ario's under pressure he's gonna get hit a couple of times gets away from that still on his feet still getting hit now he is sacked at the 36. Well, I give German Ariel credit because he kind of got hit about five times before he finally went down. Uh, he escaped twice, but was finally brought down by uh, number 97, Josh Cohen. 
who, by the way, missed him the first time around, had his arm around him, but uh, German Aereo was able to escape. Finally, Cohen br bringing him down on the left side over at the 36-yard line. Second and 17 back at the 36. German Aereo rolls right, throws short, and nope, that's incomplete. Garcia had the ball in his hands and dropped it. Well, you know, typical uh, happens too often to players. You, you want to run with the ball before it's all the way in your hands, and that's what happened with Dante Garcia. He was running a little out pattern to the right, started to try to make his turn a little too early, and wasn't able to corral the ball. Third and 17 now for Ithaca at the 36-yard line. Four receivers set. Running back stays in to block. Germany already has to dish it off short. That's to his running back, to the 30, to the 25. And I, the, did the ball come loose again? It was Anderson who was the running back. Nope, they're going to rule that he was down at the 26-yard line. So it did bobble after he was down, but they had already whistled down. Interesting, that was a setup for a, uh, a screen pass all the way. I, I was kind of wondering if Ithaca would get flagged for having its offensive linemen so far down the field. They had two blockers eight, ten yards in front of uh, the play there. But the pass was completed behind the line. Of yes, no, I know, but before before it was ever set up, they were eight or ten yards when you had receivers way down the field, is what I'm saying. Fourth down, it is going for it. Germanario drops back under pressure, kind of gets tripped up, stays on his seat, throws the ball, incomplete, and it's turned over on downs. Also, he crossed, that was, yeah, yeah he, that's an illegal forward pass as well. He went too far. He crossed the line of scrimmage. He was trying to scramble. He thought he was going to run for it for a second. He got to the line of scrimmage, let's remember, was the 26. Uh, he thought he had a gap to try to get all the way to the 19, which is where he had to go. But the RPI started to close in on him, so he let one fly. But the trouble for Ithaca was German area was already at about the 24 yard, 23, 24 yard line, well past the line of scrimmage. So RPI should get five yards out of, should get yards out of this. Because the penalty includes loss of down. So you can take the penalty and still get the ball. So the line of scrimmage was the 26. And while they're getting that squared away, let's mention that's a that's a good defensive stand by the engineers. You know, they, they did anything they wanted defensively in that first quarter. This was the first time that Ithaca's high-powered offense was seeming to get on track, was moving the ball down steadily, getting first downs, got in inside the RPI 30. But the engineers hold them uh, on downs and get the turnover. So RPI gets a bonus five. The penalty was at the 25 for the illegal forward pass. So five yards goes to the 30. RPI on first down. They're going to run right, and uh, I think that was Gaglione makes it out to the 33-yard line. So let me just review that again. It was fourth down. It was an illegal forward pass from the 25-yard line. That's a five-yard penalty plus loss of down, which means that RPI gets it at the 30. You don't see that very often. I, I can't recall the last time in a football game I actually saw that sequence where there's an illegal forward pass on fourth down. German Aereo uh, was under a lot of pressure from the RPI defensive front, and that's been the story of the first half for the engineers defensively. They've just really gone after the quarterback, not giving him much time at all. 21 to nothing, RPI leads. Second down and seven at the 33-yard line for RPI. And off goes to Meichlin, cutting behind the line of scrimmage. Meichlin stays on his feet, spins, and he makes it to the 38. Engineers, 15 rushing attempts, 61 yards, so four yards a carry so far this afternoon for RPI, which you know isn't setting the world on fire, but at the same time, so much more effective than they have been recently on the ground. Particularly the Hobart and St. Lawrence games, the running game for RPI was barely there. Wh which led to trouble offensively. Yes. Third down and two at the 38 now for RPI. Three receivers to the left. Now RPI is going to send to Chico in motion. Hand off. This will be a first down RPI as it gets out to the 42-yard line. That was Scaglione on the carry for RPI. So the chains move. RPI keeps the drive going. 7.25 to go here. First half. RPI 21. If they get nothing. This note, uh, offensive lineman Jacob Grant and others on that, opening up that hole on the right side. Again, the engineers are running the ball effectively, uh, throwing a lot of short, quick passes, moving the ball, 
uh, able to take advantage of turnovers. It's why the engineers lead 21 to nothing here with seven minutes to go in the half. First and 10 at the 42. RPI stays on the ground. Burnett is in there, escapes one tackle, 45. Burnett bounces out to the outside, stays on his feet, and he's out near the 48. Some fancy footwork there for Burnett because Nathaniel Potts, number 92, a defensive lineman who, who weighs, goes about 230 uh, for the Bombers. He was right there in the backfield ready to bring Burnett down for about a three-yard loss, and he just stutter-stepped st stepped around him and got out there on the right side to make it a, a positive play. Second and four at the 48 for RPI. We'll have one receiver on the right. Two on the left, two in the backfield at this point. Mironopoulos fakes the handoff, throws to Lombardi, and that's a nice open field tackle out there by Brenner, and that's going to stop Lombardi behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and Brenner read that well, and DeChico was the wide receiver out there on the right who was supposed to get the block down and didn't get it down. Brenner was able to get around him, and that's why that play went for a loss. Third and five for RPI. Four receivers this time for Marinopolis. Burnett in the backfield. He's gonna shift over to the left of Marinopolis. Ball's at the 47-yard line. Lombardi in motion to the right now. Marinopolis takes a snap. Good blocking. He's gonna put the ball up there, and that is completed to Chico along the sidelines. He's into Ithaca territory and pushed out right around the 21. Well, to Chico, we just singled him out as missing that block on that other short pass, and boy, he just makes up for it uh, on the very next play. He got behind the defenders who were playing up really close, uh, really trying to pressure, probably expecting a short pass, and he got around Drew Brenner, number 33, and got behind him and able to make the catch inside the 25 and get all the way down to the 21. First and 10, RPI at the 21. 21 to nothing, RPI leads with 4.50 to go in the first half. Lombardi goes motion to the left, puts three receivers over there. Marinopoulos wants to throw. This is one short to Burnett. Burnett to the 20. Burnett cut from behind, gets to the, 50, gets to the 16 yard line though before that happens. Again, trying to misdirection, which has been the story of their offense so far in the first half. He had three receivers lined up left, looked left, but instead the play was actually a screen play, a screen pass to the right to Burnett. They've been doing a lot of that all of this first half, starting, you know, trying to get the offense flowing one way, but then running the play back the other. Ball to 16 for a second and five. Pace of the game has slowed down on this drive for RPI. Burnett in the backfield, four receivers. Lombardi in motion to the left. Now he's going to, or to the right, pardon me, now goes back to the left. Fake the handoff to Burnett. They find Lombardi at the 15. Lombardi tries to make a move, and yeah, he's not going to get away that time. Lombardi is stopped at the 14 yard line. Well, and that's the play that they have now run several times, and maybe Ithaca is looking for it, which is Lombardi uh, coming off the, the end and running about two or three yards, and then just a sprint out to the sideline. They caught him off guard the first few times they ran it, but that time Ithaca was ready for it. RPI, third down and three. Burnett takes the carry. He's going to get stopped at the 16. That's a loss there for RPI. But the engineers do have the win, and Ithaca is going to take a timeout with 3.20 to go in the half. So I would expect Christian to come out to try a field goal here. And he does have the win. His longest on the season has been a 34-yarder. Uh, back in the season opener. Uh, ball spotted at about the 16, so that's probably going to be a 33-yarder, uh, depending on where the holder sets up, but he'll have a little bit of a wind. Uh, Christian, four of five on the season. Again, the engineers don't really go for many long field goals, so his season long is 34, and again, this is looking about to be about a 33-yarder. Well, only five field goal attempts in what is game now game nine. That's not a lot of attempts. You know, it's been an odd thing. The engineers 
we frankly haven't had a lot of close games. Correct. There's been, there's been a lot of games where they're either way ahead, like 38 to nothing over Rochester, or they're way behind, like uh, St. Lawrence game and the Hobart game, games that ended up kind of looking respectable but were really blowouts. They, they've not really had much in the way of nail biters with the exception of a couple. Well, let's change that because this is a fourth down and about four, and RPI is sending the offense out there, and now they're going to call a timeout. They sent out a very different formation. Only three of the five you know, primary linemen were near the ball. The other two were split out with two receivers, and RPI showed this offense. I don't know if they were just trying to see if Ithaca would jump at this point or – if Marinopoulos was told, go out there, look at the D. If it looks favorable, run a play. If not, I think that's what it was. Kill it. I, I think they ran out there and they thought, if, if, depending on how Ithaca's defense is set up, if you see an opening, call for the snap immediately and run the play. He got out there, took a quick look, and didn't let a whole lot of time run off before they called timeout. And now they're going to try the field goal. So this is Christian from the middle of the. Pass marks there, trying a 33-yard field goal. Well, nine on the hole. Snap the spot. The kick is up, and the kick is good from 33 yards. 3.16 to go here in the first half. RPI 24, Ithaca nothing. Had a little bit of a wind behind him, 10 miles an hour, and he kicked that one with, uh, cleared the crossbars with a, a lot to spare. Terrific kick by Christian, who's now five of six on field goals uh, this season. RPI, again, the score, RPI 24, Ithaca nothing. That's right, RPI 24, Ithaca nothing, with three minutes to go here in the first half. The engineers uh, came into this game decided underdogs against nationally ranked the nationally ranked Bombers, a team that is uh, still in the running for an NCAA playoff berth. And the engineers who have not lost at home all year. And they're here with, on senior day, there was a ceremony for the 16 seniors who are leaving, or rather playing their last home game today. A combination of perhaps RPI really fired up about that, the last home game, and, and along with maybe Ithaca looking ahead a little bit to its game with its arch rival Cortland next week. But this first half has been all engineers. Christian to kick off from the 35. He's been kicking them low against the wind. Now he's going to put it up in the air with the wind, taken at the 11-yard line. Ithaca to the 20, 25, 30, 35. That's it, 35-yard line. Tadeshi on the return for Ithaca. Ithaca has two timeouts and 3.08 on the clock in this first half. Well, Ithaca was a mess offensively in the first quarter. Two turnovers. Didn't really move the ball at all. I think had a, to a grand total of 20 yards of total offense. They looked a lot better and more in sync in that, that last drive. They got it all the way down to the engineers 25 before turning the ball over on down. So if you're looking at it from that perspective, uh, you know, from the Ithaca perspective, maybe you're thinking you're starting to uh, get out of that fog you were in in that first quarter, and maybe things are starting to click now but they've only got three minutes to do something with it here and get on the board in the first half. There is an injured RPI player, so we have an extended break in action. RPI defense, Amanchi Conquo, Andrew Benitez, Antonio Ragliano, and are the line up front, pardon me, Alex, Alec Hazard, Grant Tragney, Jack Fallon, and John Sadak are the linebackers. The cornerbacks are Blake Battle and Andres Gisasola, and the safeties are Joey Kotowski and Francis Perry. Amici Conquo having a terrific first half for the engineers. I, uh, their entire defense having a terrific first half. They've kept Ithaca scoreless, but especially Conquo, he's gotten credit for four tackles, half a sack, and two deflections or, or knockdowns of passes at the line of scrimmage. First and 10 Ithaca at their own 36. 308 on the clock in this first half. 24 to nothing, Bombers trail. Play action, German area doesn't see anything downfield. Now he's gonna to try to run with the ball, cut from behind. Ball game loose at the 35 yard line. Uh, the officials are coming in to unpile this and it'll be second down. I think it recovered the fumble. Again, all first half, the engineers defensive front has gotten a lot of pressure on German Ario. That time coming up and catching him from behind was Antonio Rogliano. Caught German Ario from behind, knocked the ball loose. 
a fortunate break for Ithaca and bounced right to an offensive lineman. Loss of one on that play. Second and 11 at the 35. Two and a half to go in the half. Germario looking left, throws. He's got a man wide open. That's Cooney on the completion. And he steps out at the 44 to set up a third and two. Again, RPI defensive corners generally playing off, very well off the wide receiver. Uh, and sort of just a quick seven and turn around for Cooney. And the ball was right there for him. Third and two Ithaca as we hit two minutes left to go here in the first half. Germanario looking left, doesn't see anything, under pressure, has to roll, looking right under pressure, has to roll out to his left, now throws the ball away. Luckily for him, Anderson, or Garcia, pardon me, was in the area, can't be intentional grounding. Garcia was right near where the ball went out of bounds, so on third down, Ithaca can't convert, now it's fourth down and two. Running for his life once again, and again it was Rogliano, and this time Joe Deptula, one of the linebackers, giving chase. Uh, Germanario never had time to set up, and uh, frankly, kind of lucky that that was not intercepted. He kind of just tried to get rid of the ball, had absolutely nothing on it. It was kind of wobbling out there, but uh, nobody around to, to make that interception. Fourth and two, Ithaca, they'll punt. Ball is away. Fair catch called by RPI, and the ball will be taken by Lombardi at the RPI 33. We got 1.43 to go here, first half. RPI 24, Ithaca nothing. And now the we'll see what RPI does here on offense. The conservative thing, the, the, probably the prudent thing, would be to just keep the ball on the ground. Uh, each team ha does have two timeouts left, so uh, you can't necessarily run out the clock if Ithaca doesn't want you to if they want to take a chance at stopping RPI and getting the ball back. So we'll see how the engineers decide to play the last 143 of what has probably been arguably their best first half of football all season. If I'm RPI, I'm putting this on the ground and see if I get some yards here. Uh, the, work, the last thing I want to do is give Ithaca a good opportunity late in this half when Ithaca is going to get the ball to start the second half. So RPI is going to go to the ground. Munoz Watts is going to make it out to the 37. And that's a and, and, of four. And notably, Ithaca is not calling timeout. Right. They have two left. If they thought they wanted to stop the ball, the clock quickly and force a punt, well, they're not doing it. As the clock continues to tick, we're down at 120 now. Well, they're not doing it here after first down. They've only got two, so you'd think second down and third down, you would do it after those downs, depending on what happens, because if RPI gets a first down here, then RPI could run out to half if they so choose. Munoz Watts takes the ball on second down. He's pushed forward to the 40, and the clock will and be now, stopped. You think it's going to stop the clock with a minute two left in the half. And now, yeah, now they're going to use it. So that's Ithaca's second timeout of this first half. 24 to nothing, RPI leads, 62 seconds left in the first half. RPI coming, the whole offensive unit coming over to the sideline to try to <laughs> strategize here for this play. Again, uh, you get the first, you only need three yards. If you get the first down, you run out the clock, you go in to the locker room up 24 to nothing. If you don't get those three yards, I think it will have mm, 55 seconds or, or thereabouts maybe 50 once there's a punt, um, well, to this do is something. Why I would choose to keep the ball on the ground oh, and absolutely. force Ithaca to use that last timeout. I, I, yeah, I think I'd be shocked to see him pass right here, yeah. unless something becomes op obvious to Marinopolis. Uh, I would really be shocked. And they're going to line up, look at this, with a little tight formation. And uh, Marinopolis is not even behind the center right now. This is Todd out there. So expect the ball on the ground. Todd takes the snap, drops or back, not. looks to throw. Now he's going to run with the ball, and he is caught from behind at the 38, and Ithaca calls a timeout. So Ithaca is out of timeouts, 55 seconds left in the half, and RPI has a fourth down. So Bryce Todd was lined up as the quarterback, basically. Uh, he dropped back. I think he had the option, if your guy's open on the left, go for it. If not, don't pass the ball. And he took off to scramble for the first down, and boy, Kurt, if he'd, have, if he'd have taken off about a second earlier, he had enough room to run on that left side for a first down and, and more. Um, 
but he took off at a point where the Ithaca defenders were closing in on him and one of the players able to get a paw on his jersey and bring him down. But that was that was close to Todd getting away and getting the first down and giving RPI the ability to run out the clock here in the first half. So Montreef goes out to punt, 55 seconds left. We'll see how much pressure the Ithaca Bombers bring to try to block this. They are up there bunched up really tight. Looks like Anderson is back for the punt return. Montreef gets the punt away. Taken at the 25 yard line by Anderson. Tripped up and he'll fall forward and he stopped at the 34 of Ithaca. 46 seconds left in the half. 24 to nothing, RPI leads. Kyle Samuels back there on the coverage and was able to get his hand around the foot of the punt returner and able to trip him up. Otherwise, there was, there was a bit of a, a gap for running room and a chance to bring that out to the 50. So good play by Samuels. No timeouts for the Bombers. First and 10 at the 34, 46 seconds left. Trying to put something on the board before they go in for halftime. This is WRPI Troy with Engineer Football from the East Campus Stadium. Gladney on the right side. Watch for him. He's their most dangerous receiver. Marinopoulos looks, or not pardon me, Marinopoulos. German area looks to throw. He's got a man over the middle, and that is complete to veto at the 48-yard line. Clock continuing to run. It should have stopped a little bit for the first down, but I don't think it really did. 47-yard line, first and 10 for Ithaca. 30 seconds left. German area rolls out to his left, throws. We've got a flag in the backfield, a completion at the RPI 46, but I think this might be coming back. Holding against Ithaca, so the completion won't count. They'll get backed up 10 yards. Again, German area, not much time to pass. A lot of pressure from the RPI defensive front. Keeping him more or less in scramble mode first of the first, most of the first half. Okay, the, the Bombers went to the line and now the official came in and was going to indicate something. I don't know what this is. Was It might have something to do with the time. There's 19 seconds on the clock. There were, we could hear players from the sideline yelling about the time. Okay, For, well there was a penalty but also the, the runner ran out of bounds within two minutes, so that should stop the clock until the next snap. So there's 27 seconds left. Yeah, bottom line is they reset it, add eight more seconds, 27 seconds to go here in the half. Four wide receivers, this is a second and, or first, and, uh, I'm not sure what the down is, second and 20 for Ithaca. German Ario rolling and intercepted by the engineers, kicked off at the 44-yard line with 20 seconds left. Joe Depu Deptula, the linebacker, cutting in front of the receiver, uh, which was number 11, Cooney, right at the 45. And uh, boy, what a first half for the engineers. That's the third tur turnover for the defense. Two interceptions and one fumble recovery. And now, engineers do have 20 seconds to work with. Are they going to try to throw a pass deep? Marinopoulos is out there behind center, and they've got wide receivers, two left and two right. Balls at the Ithaca, 44. RPI up by 24. Marinopoulos gets away from the pressure, still on his feet. He's going to run, and he'll go out of bounds at the 31. There's 12 seconds left in the half. You've got two timeouts. You've got time to send this one downfield. You got stop time. The, stop the clock and kick. You, right, you've got time for a couple of options. One, a pass into the end zone. Two, uh, set up for a field goal, a pass that sets up a field goal. Where do you need to get? Mm, in, probably inside the 20. Uh, the wind will be with the kicker, so maybe you need a little bit less than that, maybe just inside the 25. And right now they're sitting at the 31, so we'll see what they do. Short for the field goal or long for the touchdown? First and 10 at the 31. 
Marinopoulos, oh, he's under pressure and he's gonna get sacked back to 32. RPI calls a timeout with seven seconds left. That wasn't that wasn't one of the one of the choices. Yeah, that was not an RPI choice. There's also a flag. It looks like way back at the two, or is that just debris? No, that, that uh, looks like a flag. That is a flag. Debris. Uh, well, there's a, a <laughs> well, no, no official is running over there to pick it no, up. No, they're talking about it now. Could there have been some sort of uh, defensive holding, illegal contact in the secondary? Because that flag's all the way down at the two, which would change the circumstances of the final seconds here. If it's a penalty that deep, let's say a 15 yarder, well, the uh, engineers will be in field goal get, territory. You can't get pass interference, you could get defensive holding. Yeah, person. You can get a personal foul. I, I didn't catch the rest of that, but I, you can get a personal foul, and that's 15 yards. Yeah, the, the official was trying to explain the personal foul, but it was a little uh, muffled in the microphone, so we didn't get the full explanation. Uh, but it happened down at the two-yard line of Ithaca, and that penalty is huge. I, I am expecting, what, a 15-yard runoff here, right? Yeah, there will be 15 yards, so that will go down and to That will put them inside, inside the 20, which means they are in field goal range as long as you don't – uh, get sacked. That'll actually also give them a chance to run a play. One play. Probably one play, and, and as long as you do it quickly, you can throw for the touchdown, or you could, uh, if you wanted to play really cautiously, you just run the field goal team out right now. Right. I think they're looking at seven seconds. You could run a play here. You have, to, you have one timeout left. It's going to be all the way at the 17-yard line, and they, they have the offense out there, not the kicking team. So they're going to go for the touchdown here. So first and 10 at the 17 after the personal foul against Ithaca. Seven seconds left. RPI up 24 nothing as we're ending the first half. You can't get sacked. You cannot get sacked here. you got to get rid of the well, ball no if, matter what. If it looks like you're going to get sacked, go to the ground and call a timeout. Marinopoulos takes the snap, looking downfield. Five seconds, four. Three, pass, complete, end zone, it didn't get a foot down. Yes, yes, foot down, touchdown, RPI. McDonald gets it in the end zone, 30 to nothing, engineers. Vinny McDonald was lined up as the wide receiver on the far right. He had a small, he's, he stands 6'4 and goes 220, and he had a smaller defensive back covering him. So what did he do? He ran into seven yards into the end zone and then just cut in front of the defensive back. The ball hung up there to float for a while, and the 6'4 McDonald able to pull it down using his height to his advantage. Christian's kick is up and good. One second left, first half. RPI 31, Ithaca nothing. Easily the best half of the season here for the Engineers. They've had, they've had a couple of big wins, a couple of blowouts, but not against the caliber of team like Ithaca, who uh, has been ranked in the top 10 in Division Three all year, uh, suffered one loss, which dropped them down to 17, uh, but was the overwhelming favorite coming into today, considering when you look at the matchups, for example, let's just look at Hobart. R RPI was blown out by Hobart. Uh, final score was 41-27, but it wasn't really that close. Ithaca crushed Hobart 34 to nothing. Um, and everything on the line here for Ithaca, they're still in the running for an NCAA playoff berth. But perhaps they were looking ahead to next week's game with Cortland, maybe arch rival, and, and maybe a combination of that. And it's senior day here at RPI. There's 16 seniors. They haven't lost at home all year. They played really well at home. All of that combining, and here we are, 31 to nothing. So there's one second left. Expect a low kickoff here from RPI. You want to make sure this one's fielded in play. Because once Ithaca picks it up, you're going to run a second off the clock, and that's it. So Christine is going to boot one, taken by Ithaca at the 38. And did they signal a fair catch? Yes. I think that was a fair catch signal, so there should be one second left on the clock. Well, I didn't see the receiver signal fair catch whatsoever. They, they blew the play dead almost immediately. Right. And I – which would keep one second on the clock, but I did not see the receiver – yeah, they're pretty signal for it. I didn't see anyone on the, the team signal for it. The officials are talking this one over. One second has gone back on the clock. So they're going to try, I suppose, a Hail Mary here. 
if they do get to run a play. Let's see what we got, though. This is why I want I would kick it on the ground. Right, you squib kick, so someone has to probably bobble it before you pick it up and all well, of that. Well, you can't call a – there's no fair catch at that point. Well, did you see the guy call for a fair catch? I didn't. I didn't, I, I, I didn't but he – This was one, right of those pop up, it was one of those pop-up kicks where it's just over the front line of defenders and bounces about 15 yards deep. It took one hop and right into the Ithaca – players hands maybe he got the arm up there really quickly uh, as soon as the ball was hit but what gives that away is he started to run as soon as he caught it so yeah. I don't know I didn't see anyone signal for it anyway so here we go Hail Mary Ithaca's one play barring a defensive penalty Germanario is looking bad pass and that's just gonna bounce and that's it that wasn't anywhere close to the end zone not a well-thrown ball and we are done with one half here in Troy after 30 minutes it is RPI 31 and Ithaca nothing. All engineers this first half, they're gonna go to the locker room with a 31 to nothing lead. They've taken advantage of three turnovers. Uh, they've outgained uh, Ithaca 222 yards to 87. It's been all engineers thanks to a couple of things. One is the pressure from their defensive line not allowing German Ario any time all the first half to really set up and work his passing game. And then on offense, it's been a lot of misdirection, uh, sending players left and running the ball right or vice versa. Uh, not a lot of deep passes, but they were able to also, the one long pass they were able to take advantage of, and I say long, it wasn't that long, 17 yards, a touchdown catch by Vinnie McDonald at the end of the first half. It's been nothing but engineers. Uh, maybe a trap game for Ithaca, maybe looking ahead to next week. But here we are at halftime, RPI 31, Ithaca nothing. It's, uh, I'm not saying RPI couldn't win this game. Like, if, if you asked me before the game, could RPI win? Certainly. If you told me it was going to be 31 nothing RPI at the half, I, I would have looked at you like uh, you had something wrong. <laughs> I, I was not expecting this at all. And, and, this, and to be honest, this is the opposite of the St. Lawrence game a few weeks ago where I was not expecting St. Lawrence to be up 35 nothing in that game ever. I was never expecting that, and right. I guess it goes both ways at times. Uh, this, this, is, this is another one I didn't expect to go this where, way. Where it, where it goes the home team's way. And, and what we've seen also kind of doesn't necessarily show up immediately in the stats. Sort of body language uh, from the teams, especially on the front line, Kurt, that, that first quarter. RPI, uh, the linemen, offensive and defensively, just really fired up, a lot of energy after every play. They got an early bat down of a ball by Conquo. All of a sudden, there's just a lot of energy on the de defensive unit. Ithaca, by contrast, that first quarter, just seemed to be in a fog. Uh, their defenders were missing tackles, not wrapping up runners. Uh, offensively, they weren't having much success either on the air or on the ground. And again, just looking at the reactions of the players, it was all RPI. We're going to take a break. We are in halftime here in Troy. The score after one half of play is RPI 31. And Ithaca, nothing. And you're listening to live coverage of Engineer Football on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy.
Erica Matson, Erica Matson, please report to the pro shop.
Second down and six for Ithaca. Ball at their own 21. 31 to nothing, RPI leads here. And the ground game for Ithaca maybe gets them three yards. That's a huge pushback there. That was to Haiti on the carry. And he makes it out to the 23 yard line, 24 yard line on second down. Hurry up offense here, trying to catch RPI. Third down and three, basically they're running the option. Germanario with the ball and he'll get the first down as he goes right, turns the corner and he stopped at the 29. Yeah, nice spin move to get away from Conquo. It looked like he was gonna go down at the 25 short of the first down, but he pivoted and spun back uh, to his right and was able to get enough for the first down. First and 10, Ithaca at the 29 yard line. Fake the handoff, throw along the sidelines, and that one is out of bounds. Gladney was the intended receiver. Will he catch it? He got one foot in. All right, wow. Terrific catch <laughs> by Gladney. Uh, balancing act, he was falling out of bounds, but he had his right foot inside the marker and was able to hang on to it as he hit the ground out of bounds at the RPI 46. So quick, quick start here for Ithaca. Ball's at the 46 yard line. First and 10, German Ario misses the snap. It's back and he covers it around the 36. It was a badly snapped ball that went awry to German Ario's right. He didn't even get a hand on it. And all of a sudden it was a sprint to the ball between German Ario and defensive lineman Magnus Womble. And well, the quarterback beat the defensive lineman on the, the, the rush to the ball and able to recover, but all the way back at the Ithaca 38. So back to that reception. I didn't even think that was going to be catchable at that point. I, I really didn't that was, think. That was a wonderful <laughs> catch by Gladney. I didn't think One-handed, kind of falling out of bounds, had kept one foot in. Back at the 38, German Ario takes a snap. He dishes this one off short to the 40-yard line. Vito to the 45, and he's covered by RPI there. And back to the 46, and that'll set up a third and long. They need to get to the RPI 36-yard line. Just a quick crossing route over the middle, trying to make up some of the what was lost on that bad snap and at least make third down somewhat uh, reasonable for the Bombers. Although it's gonna be long, third and what? Uh, 18. 18. Third and 18 at the 46 for RPI. The defensive pressure and the rush was the key in the first half. Let's see how they do here. Four wide receiver set for German Ario. He's going to throw and that is complete to the RPI 42 but it's short of a first down. I think, I think they're going for it. We yeah. don't see their punting team out. They're down by 31 points. Why, why punt? And they're not. This is fourth and six. This is a five score game right now. And they're running a quick offense, trying to just go up to the line and call the signal there. Three receivers right, one to the left. Fourth down and six for Ithaca. German Ario tosses it and it's incomplete. It was off the hands of Gladney at the 40 trying to one hand a slightly awry pass and Ithaca turns it over on downs at the RPI 42. And uh, good note there to say it was awry. That's sort of been uh, what we've seen a lot from German Ario today. I mean, because he's been under pressure, uh, there's been a lot of passes like that. There's been a lot of wobblers. There's not been a lot of tight spirals and that's attributable to the pressure that the offense, that rather the RPI defensive front is able to get in the backfield of Ithaca. First and 10 at the 42 for RPI, 11.48 to go, third quarter, RPI 31, Ithaca nothing. RPI goes to the ground, Burnett doesn't see anything to the right, cuts to the left, keeps cutting to the left, vaults over a guy, and he stopped at the 48 yard line. I, me thinks you're gonna see a lot of Burnett and Scaglione and, and maybe even Merkel here in the second half and a lot of uh, running plays from the engineers. As long as they can keep moving it forward on the ground, run a lot of clock off. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the engineer's strategy here, up by 31 points in the third quarter. If they can just get the ball, their first three possessions, and run five, six minutes off the clock, that's great. Because Ithaca's been stymied, offense have been stymied all day, but they still are pretty high powered and can score easily. Um, so you want to try to run as much, shorten this game as much as possible. Burnett takes the carry, doesn't see anything up front, cuts left, gets the first down. Burnett stays on his feet and he has stopped at the 46 of Ithaca. Well, that was a nifty run by Burnett. He started up the middle, went to his left, got about two yards, saw that sealed off, cut back to the right, baited two more tackles and was able to get a first down. Uh, one of the best uh, five or six yard runs you'll see. 
RPI milling about between plays at this point. Trying to run a lot of, you know, <laughs> maximize the amount of pl uh, time taken on every play. Uh, play clock down to 10. I'd be surprised if they run any play with more than 10 seconds on the play clock. You should get below half. five for everything at this point if you're RPI. Hand off on first down, Burnett will get caught and he has stopped for no gain. Nobody fooled on Ithaca that time. Miles Haynes, a linebacker coming in from the left side. We got a flag. Late flag. Very late flag comes in from the Ithaca sideline. I got number 51 for RPI, put his hands up on his helmets like, what? <laughs> you know, what me? And he's, now he's got his palms extended outward. Well, that is 51, um, 51 Thomas Olison, an offensive lineman. A dead ball personal foul. It was a little bit of a scrap, I suppose, after the play. And it's going to go 15 yards against the engineers. And That is the kind of call that just drives coaches crazy. A dead ball, personal foul. Your team's moving the ball. They don't get the down back. It was a dead ball foul. They don't get the down back. Now they're backed up, and this drive is looking a little less. That's Bill Henry, by the way, the referee for today's game, giving us the call. So RPI's got a second and 25 back at their own 39-yard line instead of a second and 10 at the Ithaca 46. RPI bunched in tight. They were fake the handoff. Pass complete to Meichelin in the flat. Meichelin's not going to find a whole lot of room here. He stopped at the 41. Again, a very conservative call, even though it was a pass. It was just a quick swing out to Meichelin over on the right side in the backfield. Didn't have much in the way of blocking in front of him. Just able to get a couple of yards. Third down and a lot. Third and 23 for RPI at the 41 yard line. And, and again, be, considering the circumstances of the game, 31 to nothing here in the third quarter, you would expect them to, to either run the ball or maybe throw short a safe pass so that you can keep the clock running. More important than getting the first down at this point. Meislin, he fakes the pitch to Lombardi. Meislin's gonna go left, turns the corner, runs out of bounds at the 45. Well, yeah, not a, you know, I bet if he had that decision over, he would have, he tried to get around the defensive cornerback there on the left side um, and was not able to. I, I think if he had that one back, he would have just cut inside, stayed in bounds. He wasn't going to get the first down anyway and, and let the clock continue to run. So if you're going to try to run some clock, you got to be a little heads up on it, situations like that. Fourth down for RPI, Montreef boots the ball away with the wind, high kill, and this is another bad play. RPI is going to recover, but the play is dead. Muno's watch races in, hits the return man before the ball got there, and that's interference with the opportunity to catch the ball, and that's gonna be 15 yards against RPI. Uh, yeah, and, and, and I don't understand. He's He's got his palms upward like, what's the foul? But That's I mean, clearly he, a foul. Well, he crushed him before the ball even arrived. Yes. I mean, it was not even close. It, it wasn't even a question of fair catch or no fair catch. I mean, he, he hit him before the ball got there. And this is a little bit of a dangerous time here for RPI, Kurt. They, they had the ball on the Ithaca side of the field, and we saw a, a bad penalty, a, a dead ball offensive uh, personal foul on one of the linemen, which moved the ball all the way back in engineer territory. Now we've got fair catch interference. That's another 15 yards for Ithaca. Uh, in the short span of about a minute, instead of RPI threatening to score, we're having Ithaca start its next drive in not great, but decent field position. And if you're RPI, you gotta be a little concerned here with uh, losing discipline. Yes. You're up big. And yeah, you're trying to run clock and you're probably running a kind of a conservative game plan at this point. But the last thing you can do is, you know, uh, commit a lot of bad penalties, dumb penalties that give the other team a chance. Ball goes to the 29 yard line, first and 10 for Ithaca. They are down 31 to nothing. The pass complete to Gladney and he makes it out to the 40 and that'll be another Ithaca first down. 
taken down by three engineers, including Deptula, number 45, the linebacker, with the finishing touch to knock Glatney down. First and 10 at the 40. And the handoff goes to Anderson, tries to weave his way through. He's going left, and he'll get stopped at around the 43. 7.50 to go here in the third quarter. RPI up 31 to nothing. Yeah, the penalty situation, it was a, the first 15 yarder, which kind of kills RPI's drive there, is a dead ball foul, personal foul. But the, the hitting the punt return guy, the ball was not there yet. I know you're trying to time that, but you got a 31-point lead. Germanario fakes the handoff and gets chipped up at the line of scrimmage. And that'll be a third down now for Ithaca. Big play here. Ithaca down 31 points. Their last possession, they were on the RPI side of the field and went for it on fourth down, turned it over on downs. It might be a four-down situation every possession here for Ithaca in the second half. I would not doubt that. Third down, and Ithaca pass complete, and that'll be to Garcia, and he's got a first down to the RPI 49-yard line. A screen pass over the middle, set up perfectly by the Bombers lineman. I, you know, in some ways, I'm, not su I'm surprised they haven't gone to that earlier today, given how much trouble German Arios had in the pocket. First down. Garcia gets the handoff, goes right, turns it upfield, and Garcia is stopped at the 41. And a little more energy now on the Ithaca bench. Uh, they were down, they're down 31 points at half, but these two big penalties at RPI sort of enliven the Bombers bench over there. Germanario keeps it himself, and he is going to get a first down as he gets to the 37, so the chains will move for Ithaca as they're running a hurry-up offense at this point. Yeah, no huddle look. It's but what they've been going through the last two possessions here. It keeps RPI from being able to substitute as much as they want and uh, set up defensively. 6.05 to go, third quarter. First and 10, Ithaca. Ithaca trailing 31 nothing. They're going to look end zone here, and that is incomplete, intended for Gladney along the near sideline. And He was battling down there with Grisa Sola the entire way. Uh, a lot of hand contact, and at the very end, in the end zone, it looks like maybe their cleats got caught up because uh, Gladney hit the ground. I was kind of waiting to see if there might be a call because of that incidental contact, but uh, no, no flag by the referees, despite Gladney going down in the end zone. That slows things up a bit as the incomplete pass stops the clock. Second down and 10, Ithaca at the 37 of RPI. Germanario throws the ball right before he gets hit, and that's a bounce pass, and that doesn't count. Intended for Cooney, he caught it on the bounce, and it'll be third down now for Ithaca. Some chippiness now. Conquo came in to hit Germanario right after he had delivered the ball, so it wasn't a sack, it also wasn't a late hit. But then I think Germanario took to exception to Conquo not letting him off the ground immediately, and kind of swatted him with a backhand. Refs letting him play, but things getting a little chippy here. Third down and 10, German Ario looks right. Now he's going to run left and he decides to keep the ball, stays on his feet and we've got a whistle. Okay, the, the, I thought the whistle blew before he ever it went out did. of bounds. It, we, I don't know exactly what happened. There was a referee's whistle while German Ario was outside by the, the numbers on the left side, a flag way over here on the right side where an RPI defender was tangled up with a receiver, a CJ Shoemaker. Yeah, I, on the right side, and that's where the flag was. I'm certain the whistle came it, before it he was down. The, the ref was absolutely blowing his whistle on this side of the field while the play was still active on the far side, on the left side. So uh, we'll see. They'll try to straighten out the call, but that, that's got also got to be a mistake by one of the uh, by one of the officials. It certainly is. Now, usually, if you have an inadvertent whistle like that, it's a do-over. Uh, we've seen this. We've seen this a couple of times. Famously, in the 2003 NCAA playoff game, RPI versus Ithaca here in Troy, when RPI's quarterback took the ball, on a, he faked the handoff, kept the ball, and the officials blew the play dead when the other guy got tackled. And they ended the play, and then they turned around and realized the ball wasn't there, and they, it was RPI got a do-over. But in this case, uh, yeah, there's a flag on the play. Uh, <laughs> 
Well, also, you could almost understand maybe everyone gets faked out. A referee thinks some guy has a handoff and he's tackled. I, I am really baffled by why a whistle was ever called here. The ball, the pass was not thrown. Jim and Ariel was scrambling to his right, trying to get around left end. And like we said, he was outside by the numbers right around the 30, Let's four, see if 35, can... 40, and they blew, someone blew the whistle. Let's see if we can get an explanation here. Inadvertent whistle. Oh, God. Okay, so the bottom line here is... Do-over. It's, it's a do-over. Ithaca, there was an inadvertent whistle. Ithaca has the option, do you want to run the play again or do you want to take the results of the play? They will run the play again. And the the penalties cancel out, so they become a non-factor. So it goes back to third and 10 on the 37. And it was Shoemaker and Gladney who were tangled up and both uh, called for personal foul offsetting. German Ario drops back, now he's gonna run with the ball. He's to the 30 and he gets hit, gets away from that to the 25 and he stays on his feet and he's down to 21 and that'll be an Ithaca first down. Joe Deptula, the linebacker, came up and met German Ario at about the 30, got an arm around him, but German Ario able to spin away and get all the way down to the 21. Deptula also hobbling back to the line of scrimmage. And, and also we got another engineer down. That looks like Magnus Womble, number 90, holding his left knee and on his back kind of, well, writhing would be overstating it, but kind of in obvious, in obvious pain with his left knee. And we're gonna have a, a timeout here to help him off the field. So the result of the play moved Ithaca down to the 21-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Ithaca at that point. 5-12 to go here in the third quarter. RPI leading Ithaca 31-20. to uh, Out of town, St. Lawrence leading Rochester 20-6. to Ithaca has been successful here in the second half running this no huddle offense. Uh, obviously trying to get in as many plays as you can not only because of the clock, but also to not allow RPI to substitute defensively. Got a chance to get on the board now, first and 10 from the 21. Germanario throws towards the sideline. That is complete. So nice work out there by Gladney to get more yards than I thought he was going to get, and he's down to the 13. Well, it was sort of one of those quick out and a screen set up by another receiver. In this case, it, it was the tight end for Ithaca out there, number 87, James Jarvis able to free up Gladney to get uh, more yards. On second down and short, the handoff goes to Anderson, and he's stopped right near the first. No, he's a little shorter. He's down to the 12. You, uh, Ithaca needs to get to the 11 for a first down. Antonio Rogliani, number, Rogliano, number 98, and others there to greet Anderson and stop him just short of the first down. Big down here now, third and short. Of course, it's four down territory for Ithaca. Third and one for the Bombers. Germanario looks left. Now he's going to run with the ball. 15 to the 10. Germanario inside the five. And this will be a first and goal for Ithaca. Good coverage by the engineers. No place to throw the ball, but Germanario wisely reading that and had lots of room to roam out on the right side, taking it all the way down to the five. First and goal, Ithaca at the five. 3.50 to go, third quarter, RPI 31. Ithaca nothing, almost a bad snap again. Uh, he'll get the hand off, ball though. To Haiti takes the handoff and he is stopped at the four yard line. I wonder how much of that was a, a, a bad handoff or whether German Ariel was having second thoughts about keeping that himself and, and faking the run and trying to take it off the right side. Regardless, here we are, second and goal. To Haiti still in the backfield. Two wideouts each side. German Ario is going to go, and he throws for Gladney to the right, and it goes off Gladney. Uh, did it, it went off Gladney, right? Yeah. And what it, RPI goes bench it goes incomplete. Goes RPI incomplete. bench here is upset because they want an offensive interference call. What happened, and they've run this play before, is they've got that huge tight end there, Jarvis, out wide with Gladney, and he knocked down the RPI defender for, before the ball ever got there. And, RPI wanted an offensive interference, but it was not called. It was sort of like that screen play you get where you have two receivers out there, one of them not really looking for a pass. He's actually blocking the defensive back. 
Third and goal. Over the top, and that is to Gladney, and that is a touchdown for Ithaca. The Bombers get on the board with two, pardon me, 320 to go here in quarter number three. It's now RPI 31 and Ithaca six. Gladney using his height there is just sort of a fade route towards the back corner, back right corner of the end zone. Gladney stands 6-3, able to reach up there and catch a ball that was lobbed up high and come down with it for the engine for the Bombers first touchdown and uh, and they're going to line up and try to go for two here Kurt they're down 31 to 6 so yeah, do the math if you can score four touchdowns and four uh, two point conversions yeah it is really a four possession four point or score lead not three uh, Germanario looking down towards the end zone he's just going to get dragged down at the 20 yard line uh, that play had nothing going for it they backed it all the way up to the 20 the conversion failed now it's a 25-point lead, and it's still a four-score game. You didn't really lose much there. Rogliano, number 98, chasing German Arios. He's dropping back and fading to his right. Pushed him all the way back to the 20, was trying to bring him down. Finally got some help from Josh Cohen to complete the sack. Well, it won't be recorded as a sack because it was a conversion try. But to foil the conversion and keep the score at 31-6. Union has taken a 3-0 lead on Utica with 6.42 to go in the second. And the engineer is still comfortably ahead here, but look, there's 3.20 to go in this quarter and a whole fourth quarter to play. I, you know, the engineers can't just go three, three and out and three and out and punt the ball. They still need to, if not score, can control the ball for a while, run off some clock, get a couple of first downs. They can't. Offense can't afford, can't afford to fall asleep just yet. So does Ithaca kick or deep, or do they kick short here? Well, they'll be kicking into the wind. It's not a hard wind, but it's probably about 10 miles an hour. I, I, they'll probably try to pin RPI back as far as it can. They are going to kick this. Munoz Watts takes it at the 12-yard line, 15, 20, 25. He's caught there, and he has stopped at around the 26. And RPI will start out their next possession there. 3.13 to go here in quarter number three. RPI 31, Ithaca 6. If you missed the first half and you're just joining us, wow, RPI probably its best half of football all season. Scored on their first possession. Uh, going eight plays down the field and 68 yards for a touchdown to take a 7-0 lead. After that, it was the engineers taking advantage of turnovers by the Bombers in the first half. A fumble and two interceptions led to uh, three more touchdowns. The engineers went into the locker room up 31 to nothing. They haven't done a whole lot here in the third quarter. They've mostly been trying to milk the clock. And see what they do here on this direct, next possession. Direct snap to Lombardi. He's going to run right, and Lombardi picks up a good chunk of yards here. Started out at the 21, makes it out to the 30, or pardon me, the 26, makes it out to the 32. And a small thing, but a big thing, Kurt. As he made it around right end, he had an option uh, as he was coming into contact with the cornerback to try to go around him to the far side, the outside, or cut inside. He cut inside, which allowed him to stay in bounds and keep the clock running. Second and four at the 32. Lombardi is still out there at the QB position at this point. Right, no Marinopolis, which would indicate a run is coming here Lombardi in can, all likelihood. He can throw. Lombardi's going to take it. He's going to run straight ahead, and he's out to about the 34 on second down. That sets up a third and two. Now Marinopolis and Meishlin are both going to come in. Again, they're trying to run the play clock below 10, maybe even below five seconds on every snap, which if they do so here, we'll get them down under the 140 mark. But it's really important that they pick up this first down and keep possession. Last thing you want to do is give the Bombers a chance at any momentum here. Five seconds left on the play clock. RPI about to snap the ball. Two seconds left. There we go. And the pass complete, and this will be a first down as to the 40, to the 43, 44 is Kelly. 
on the reception for RPI, so the engineers maintain possession. Clock will continue to run here in this third quarter. RPI up 31 to six. Well, Malik Kelly is a 5'9 senior out of Staten Island, and we haven't been able to call his name very much this afternoon in what is his final home game, but boy, an important catch there. He, he just ran, started on the right side, ran across the middle, uh, a quick five yards and then uh, cutting route, was wide open on the left, makes the catch short of the first down, but able to keep his legs pumping and get the first down up at the 44. Five seconds on the play clock, under a minute to go here in the third quarter. RPI gives to Scaglione, haven't seen him out there in a while on first down, and he is stopped at the 45-yard line. Another thing you're going to see, and you saw it a little bit on that play and probably see it the rest of the way here, if, if the Bombers can stand up the RPI ball carrier like they did right there and try to strip it away from him. Uh, Scaglione, fortunately for the engineers, had a tight hold on that ball and uh, you know was able to complete the play without turning it over, but you'll probably see a lot of that. The Bombers efforting to do that now is try to create some sort of turnover, some sort of strip of the ball at the end of each play here. Second and nine at the 45 for what is probably the last, maybe the last play of this quarter. And that's a pass complete to McDonald on the slant. And he is into Ithaca territory, caught at the 32 yard line. Well, just when it looked like RPI was going to do nothing but run the ball, uh, there was a fake handoff at the middle. Marinopoulos looked to McDonald, who had a, just a quick slant route, got the inside angle, and able to pick up the first down all the way to the Ithaca 32 on the final play of the third quarter. So RPI on Ithaca's side of the field with 15 minutes left, and the Engineers with a 25-point lead on Ithaca. The Bombers only have 15 minutes to turn this around or their NCAA postseason dream is going to die here. Out of town, Utica trailing Union 3-0 with 4.45 to go in the second and with 2.02 to go in the second, St. Lawrence is leading Rochester 20-6. Just the second catch of the afternoon there for McDonald, but boy, two of them have been big, or rather, uh, third catch. He had that touchdown early on, and then that one for a first down to put the engineers on the Ithaca side of the field at the 32 to start the fourth quarter. He's got 40 yards in receiving, which is second on the team right now to Meislin, who has 60 going into the fourth quarter. You are listening to WRPI Troy with Engineer Football from the East Campus Stadium. Kurt Stutt and Yancey Roy on the call for you today. 31 to 6 RPI lead. Start of the fourth quarter. First and 10 at the 32 for RPI. Marinopoulos gets rid of the ball to Scaglione and he's caught after a gain of one. Just a short little screen pass out to the left side. Ithaca not really fooled by it. Drew Brenner, the cornerback, and others in on the tackle. RPI now looking at a second and nine, still 20 seconds left on the play clock. RPI in no rush. Meislin shifts in behind the line of scrimmage. Scaglion takes the handoff, caught in the backfield, manages to get back to the original line of scrimmage for the series. That was Nieto. Nieto. Nieto, part of number me. 13. Yeah, uh, not fooling, again, not fooling anyone on the play there. RPI going conservative here in the fourth quarter, just a simple run play. Ithaca kind of selling out for that, overplaying the run, not expecting RPI to throw any deep passes. And so they were coming with full pressure and able to create a loss on that play. Let's say the ball is back at the 33 at this point. Third down and 11 for RPI. Against the wind in this fourth quarter, it's RPI left to right towards the gymnasium here at the East Campus Athletic Village. Oh, Scaglione fumbled the ball. I think he got it back. And lucky to do so. Yeah, he got it back at the line of scrimmage, and it'll, or lost the yard, actually. And it'll be fourth and about 12 for RPI. 
And do you go for it or do you punt? RPI still has its offense out there. It's fourth down. You're, you are deep in your opponent's territory, so you might think, why not? And it looks like they are going to go for it. Well, the offense is staying out there right now. Unless they're trying to draw a penalty, but it's fourth and Well, they might be taking, a delay, of, they might be taking a delay of game here. Well, right, right. It's now at 12.48 and counting, so they are going to try to milk every second they can. You look over to the sideline, you look like you might run the play. Oh, no, we ran out of time, and that's a delay of game against RPI. They're kind of going through the motions there. And Marinopoulos <laughs> looking over to the side as if he's waiting for the signal, but had no intention of snapping the ball whatsoever. So it'll be fourth down for the engineers from the Ithaca 39. The punt team will be coming out here, a chance to pin the Bombers deep in their own territory. Again, it's 12.33 to go in the game. RPI 31, Ithaca 6. Ithaca came in set ranked number 17 in the nation and just totally got waylaid by the engineers in the first half. If you missed it, engineers were out 21 to nothing in the first quarter, and it's been all engineers since then. Montreef out for fourth down. They marked off the five yards for the delay of game. Kicks it away. Kicks it away from the punt returner. It's going to bounce. Take an RPI bounce inside the five, down to the one. Excellent work by the special teams. Great work by Montreef. Meisland covers it at the one. And Ithaca's got a 99-yard field with 12.23 left to go in the game. Another play that kind of uh, underlines what's been happening here all afternoon, which is uh, everything is going RPI's way. A nice directional kick there by Montreef. He kicked it to the right side away from the punt returner who didn't make an attempt to field it whatsoever. Kind of bounced softly somewhere around the 11 and just kept going towards the end zone to where it was downed at the one by Meishlin. And so now Ithaca first down at its own one 12.23 to go and down by 25 points. Germanario out of the shotgun. Remember, we saw this last week against Buffalo State. RPI ran a play at their own one-yard line, one yard line out of the shotgun and gave up a safety because they couldn't get back to the line of scrimmage. And now we've got a flag for delay of game. Yes, delay of game against Ithaca. Uh, Bring it RP back even farther. One player from RPI wanted the safety. That's not a safety. Well, I, I understand the I understand the <laughs> desire that was John Sadak, but that's not a safety. Holding in the end zone is a safety, but a delay of game intentional is not. grounding in the end zone is a safety. Right. If you yeah. commit the penalty in the end zone, it's a safety. But this penalty is at the one. Bring it, so now they're back to the half yard line. There comes a point in time where you can't keep going half the distance. Handoff on first down, and that will at least to Haiti at least gets out of the end zone and makes it back to the two yard line. Gets to the two yard line. Took it off the right tackle. Was kind of met at the goal line, but able to spin out to the right and out to the two. Nice effort there by DeHaiti. Right. So last week against Buffalo State, RPI up by four in a similar situation. Snap back, handoff, and tackle in the end zone resulted in a safety. I would prefer, uh, Ed and I did the game last week in this circumstance, I would prefer in this circumstance to put somebody under center and have them just try to power through to get a couple of yards. But it'll be second down from the two now, and that's the Haiti again stopped at the line of scrimmage. So it'll be a third and about nine at the two for Ithaca. John Sadak, the linebacker and co-captain in on that tackle. Third down and nine at the two yard line. Germanario looks to throw, under pressure in the end zone, rolls to his right, gets away from that, now throws the ball downfield and that is incomplete. Looking for Anderson around the 30 and it's an incomplete pass. <laughs> I know this is a four down game at run right now for Ithaca, but you have got to punt here. Fourth down from their own two and it looks like they are bringing the punt team out. Again, once again, good pressure for the engineers front four. Uh, defensively. It seemed like in the first half we were calling Conquo and Wombles number a lot. That was Rogliano again. He's had a terrific second half here really pressuring the quarterback but everyone on the front line has been in on it for the engineers all game. 
Fallon at the back of his own end zone. Takes the snap, kicks the ball away. Lombardi at the 35. He's going to try to run this one back. Turns around. He's retreated to the 37. Hit at the 35, and now he's down. And the 35 will be his forward progress. That's Ithaca's 35. We have 10.53 to go here in this game. RPI 31, Ithaca 6. Good job by Fallon just to get that punt off. He didn't have a lot of room. The snap was coming from the two. He was back along the goal line. Just got an end over end kick. and Didn't get much distance on it, but getting it out to the 35 is, is good enough and under those circumstances. So there's 10.53 on the clock. RPI at the Ithaca 35. Pinning Ithaca back to the one, put them in a bad position, and RPI's got the ball back in good position. Marinopoulos doesn't see anything downfield, starts to run with the ball, now he's going to throw, finds a wide open Meisselin at the 25, to the 20, to the 15, and tries to make a jump. That doesn't really work as well as he had hoped, but RPI does move the ball down to the 11, and that'll be a first down for the engineers. Well, heads up play there by Mark Meisselin, the senior wide receiver. Seeing that Marinopoulos was in trouble, he came back to the ball and just camped out on that right sideline. Nobody from Ithaca came with him, so he was all alone. As soon as Marinopoulos was able to spot him uh, and deliver the pass, Meislin had a, a lot of running room, enough to get a first down for the engineers all the way down to the 11. First and 10 RPI at the Ithaca 11. 31 to six RPI leads, 10 minutes to go in today's game. Marinopoulos, kind of flinched there, now rolls to his right, looking downfield, and he's gonna throw this one away. Really good defensive coverage by Ithaca. He was looking for Nick, Marinopoulos was looking for Nick Smith in the right corner, but they were just hounding him. Smith had no room whatsoever. Smart move by Marinopoulos just to throw it out of bounds. Second and 10 at the 11 for RPI, under 10 to go in the game. Marinopoulos gives the Munoz watch, tries to dance his way through the line, now starts powering his way downfield, and he has stopped at the six. Good effort there by Munoz Watts. He had five carries for 26 yards through the first hey, three McGovern. quarters. They've done a good job of, of home, spreading buddy. out the rushes here McGovern, on engineers uh, <laughs> among the backs. Scaglione, six carries. Burnett, eight. Munoz Watts, five. Lombardi, four. Misdirection has been a real story for the success of the engineers' Shout offense out to the whole McGovern this afternoon. Family. Marinopoulos Maryland, out of the baby. shotgun. Looked like they were going to snap the ball, then opted not to because there were still 15 seconds on the play clock. Game clock is running. Four wideouts, Munoz Watts moves ahead of Marinopoulos now. He's looking around, Marinopoulos throws, touchdown! Finds Meislin alone near the back of the end zone, and RPI leads 37 to six. Good look by Marinopoulos in, in that he adjusted. He, looked, he wanted to go to Nick Smith in the right corner for a quick down and out pattern, but that was covered. He then looked left and short, that was covered. All of a sudden he looks at the back of the end zone and there's Meishlin, who somehow or another slipped everyone and was all alone right under the goal post. Touchdown pass again for Marinopoulos, another one today, and now it's 37 to six. What a day for the seniors here on the engineer squad. Christian's kick makes it 38 to six, which that score pretty much does it for Ithaca. I don't know if they could have come back from 31 to six, but now it's a 32 point lead. Yeah, yeah, uh, they scored in the third quarter and you think they got the momentum and you know, going into the fourth, it's not unreasonable to think you can score well, it's a long shot, but it's but it's been done before to score four touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Now, that lead is out at 32 again, and uh, I think that's going to make the engineers a whole lot more comfortable about just running out time and putting this one away. It's going to be a best win of the year for the engineers. They came in decided underdogs against a team that's been nationally ranked all year, but again, a, maybe a combination of their playing at home. It's senior day, Ithaca. Kind of caught in a trap game in between playing Union last week and arch rival Cortland next week. And 
They came out flat in the first quarter, had a terrible first half, and have never really threatened the engineers at all today. Low kick by Christian. Somebody from Ithaca has to field this ball, and they will cover it at the 24-yard line. <laughs> the up men, Clifford was back deep. The up men all ran away from the ball and waited for Clifford to get it, and Clifford had to come and get it. He had to run up to it and find it. In the meantime, RPI is racing to what is a live ball. Yeah, it just skidded along on the right side, and it, it's, you know, sniggled through all of the defending players, and this kind of died as it got to the 30. And uh, Clifford had to run all the way up and just fall on the ball 20 at the 24-yard line, so it wasn't a turnover. First down for Ithaca. They go to the ground as I think they at this point also realize a 32-point lead is not going to be overcome with only nine, less than nine minutes left in the game. Anderson. Well, they are going no they're, huddle. They're so. going to go no huddle and hurry this up. Now German Ariel looks to throw on second down, and that's almost, uh, almost picked off battle, went racing in front of it, trying to get to that ball first. It goes incomplete. He had an interception in the first half, the first turnover of the game which led to the engineer's second touchdown, and he thought he had a chance at that one too, just missed it. Third down and five at the 29 yard line. Germanario drops back, now he's gonna run with the ball. He's got the first down to the 35 and goes out of bounds at the 40. And that'll be an Ithaca first down. Got out of bounds, got a little bit of a shove at the sideline from Francis Perry. I think some of the Ithaca players wanted a flag for late hit, but mm, it occurred right at about the line and the uh, at the sideline and the refs decided not to throw the flag there. At the 40, first and 10 Ithaca, 8.15 to go in the game, 38 to six, RPI leads. Throw downfield, that is complete. And they find Vito at the RPI 30. Okay, Joey. Probably best, longest pass of the afternoon for German Ario. First time that he's had enough time to set up in the pocket and look for one of his deep receivers. Ball at the 28 for Ithaca. Under eight to play here in the game. RPI up 38 to six. And that is a pass over the middle, complete to Gladney, and he has stopped at the 25. Joe Deptula on the coverage there for the engineers, or rather, sorry, 46, Austin Charles making that tackle. Second and seven at the 25 for Ithaca. And this will be a handoff to Get Anderson out. cutting over from the wideout position, and Anderson is stopped at the 21. Kind of the old fashioned end around. RPI wasn't really fooled on that one though. Third down and three for the Bombers at the 21-yard line. Germanario looks to throw, and that is, goes through the defender, basically finds Gladney, and Gladney is in for the touchdown. Guisasola was the defensive back there who thought he had an interception, maybe even, maybe even thought he could run it all the way back. It was on a sideline pass down at around the 13-yard line. He cut in front of Gladney. Thought he had the interception. Somehow or another, the ball went through both of his hands. I think Gladney was kind of surprised that he got it because he kind of he juggled it at first. I don't think he was expecting it. Next thing you know, he's down the sideline. He just had to avoid one tackler and was in for the second touchdown of the afternoon for the Bombers. Bombers will go for two. Four wideouts for a German Ario. To Haiti in the backfield, and now we've got a timeout. No, delay of game against Ithaca. Well, when you take a delay of game penalty on an extra point, that sort of sums up what kind of day it's been for your offense. Ball's back to the seven now as they go for it. They go, pardon me, Ithaca goes for two. 
It is right now a 26 point game. They're looking to make it a 24 point game. Now listen, the man in motion. German area throws and that is incomplete. So the pass <laughs> fails on the conversion attempt with 7.04 to go here in quarter number four. It is RPI 38, Ithaca 12. He was looking in the back of the end zone there, uh, looking for Vito, but he was pretty well covered. There was just a little bit of a slither, sliver of room for him to try to deliver that pass as Vito was in between two defensive backs, but able to get a hand on the ball, but not really control it. And the ball falls incomplete and keeps the score at 38 to 12 with 7.04 to go in the ball game. Out of town, the other two games have gone to the half. It is Union leading Utica 10-0 and St. Lawrence leading Rochester 27-12. For RPI, they've got a 26-point lead here with 7.04 to go next week at Union for the Dutchman Shoes game. If the scores hold up, that would be an undefeated 9-0 Union team RPI would be playing. And a team that will probably be in the top 10, move into the top 10 of the Division Three rankings. Uh, that depends. Well, so they came in 14. They got to have people ahead of them lose. True. If, if nobody ahead of you loses, you can't. It's going to be tough to move up. You know, Union is a team that was kind of a dark horse. There's an onside kick. Onside kick covered by RPI at the 46-yard line. So that was Convoy for RPI out there as part of the hands team. You can see Meishlin's out there. To Chico, you had a whole bunch of wide receivers up front, and that was Conboy who covers it at the 46. Not your typical onside kick, not one where you drive it into the ground and hope it pops up after a couple bounces. That was almost like a little pop-up catch, like a pop-up to the first baseman, and Conboy able to just field it cleanly and go down on a knee at the 46. So RPI starts out at the Ithaca 46-yard line, up 38 to 12 with 7.03 to go in today's game. Marinopoulos, hands off on first down. Uh, maybe two yards out of this for RPI. Who we got in as running back right now for the engineers? That is Burnett on the carry for RPI. Second and eight RPI, six and a half to go in today's game. As has been typical for this second half, RPI waiting to snap the ball until there's about five seconds left on the play clock. This time a little bit earlier, eight, but it's a direct snap to Lombardi. He runs right, turns the corner, and he's out at the 41. He's trying to get around the corner again, you know. You, I don't know, you might, you might, if you have that one back, you might decide to stay uh, along the numbers and, and just keep the ball in bounds. Down to six minutes to play. For Ithaca, this finishes out their league schedule. They have Cortland next week. They are the off team next week. Union's the off team. They're playing Utica this week. They're not playing a league game. And Ithaca's the off team next week when they have Cortland. High snap taken by Marinopoulos on third and about four. Marinopoulos is going to start to run for this, and he is down near the marker. And I, I think he went down a yard early. He might have. It probably wasn't the, the first thing on his mind. I mean, he, he was uh, the Ithaca players were starting to close in on him, and I think he just wanted to go down and, and avoid any kind of turnover. Uh, it was sort of his primary goal right there. Just go down, control the ball, let the clock keep running. It's fourth down and one, and 
they might go for it, or, or we might have the situation again where they run it all the way down and let the clock run out and just take the delay game penalty. But look, here we have Lombardi. Yeah, Lombardi just came in. Marinopoulos. Coming in to set up at court quarterback, which is usually a signal of a running play. And he's got Burnett to be his blocker, and Lombardi takes the ball, and where did he end up? I don't know that he got that. I think he might be a little short. They, they, it looks like they're marking him just shy of the 36. I think they're probably going to have to bring out the chains, but from way up here in the press box, I'm well, not so sure. The chains didn't quite make the 36 either. Yep, they're going to measure. They will measure this. We've got 4.45 left to go here in Troy. 38 to 12 RPI leading Ithaca, and we have one of those rare measurements in Division Three football. <laughs> well, since most people play on the artificial turf, the lines are you know permanently in there. The lines are right. So you can usually gauge based on the hash marks where the ball is. And that's a first down for RPI. Just enough. About uh, the yeah, chain came down right at about the white circle at the, the far end of the, uh, the top end of the football. So by what? three or four inches. If you missed the first half, boy, you missed RPI's best half of football. The way this game started, the engineers took the opening drive, went eight plays, in for a touchdown, up seven to nothing. Ithaca's first possession, interception. RPI took the ball, drove all the way down and scored to go up 14 to nothing. The ensuing kickoff, Ithaca fumbled, RPI recovered, drove again. It was up 21 to nothing just a few minutes into the game. Burnett takes the carry on first down. And again, a lot of jumping in today's game, but he didn't get over everybody the way he wanted to. And he has stopped at the 36. And Ithaca's calling a timeout with 4.14 left to go in today's game. Time disappearing on the Bombers today. Losing to Union 31-21 last week. Clinches Union, the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. A loss today for Ithaca that sends them out of NCAA contention with two losses, unless some really weird stuff happens. And it'd be really weird stuff to get back into contention for that. And also, they can't get a tie for the league title if they lose today. Union will clinch sole possession of the Liberty League title. You know, we said it at the opening. RPI has had a tough second half of the season, a decided underdog against a high-powered Ithaca team. But was, what was working in the engineers' favor is that they're at home and it's senior day. And Ithaca, they're catching Ithaca in between Union and Cortland games. And it could be a trap game for Ithaca. And that's exactly how it's played out here this afternoon. Second down and 10. Burnett takes the handoff and... Uh, not really a hole up the middle. He stopped at the 34, and Ithaca's going to call another timeout with 4.07 to go. That's their second timeout of the second half. They are down to one. And in a season, you know, last year, a, a terrific run for the engineers through the NCAA playoffs, one of the best in school history. And so they came into this year. They had lost a lot of players, but they were still expected to be in the running for the conference title. The fact that they've, they've fallen out of that uh, chase, had to be disappointing, but boy, this game, you know, making up for a lot of disappointment here this afternoon, beating a ranked team at home, a team that uh, had a lot to play for. Well, if this sorts out, RPI wins today, that St. Lawrence game is a heartbreaker because RPI did not play well at all against St. Lawrence. I think that was a game, had they played well, they could have won, and had they beaten St. Lawrence, they'd still be in the running right now if they had beaten St. Lawrence. Mm -hmm. That's the game that is, if, they, if RPI looks back at this season, that's really the heartbreaker for RPI. If they beat St. Lawrence, this game would matter, and next week would matter for the league title. Instead, RPI losing made last week's Ithaca Union game the title game. Third down for RPI. Burnett gets the ball at the 30-yard line, stays on his feet to the 25. That's a first down for RPI. Smart running by Dylan Burnett. The D Ithaca defenders gave him the sideline. He was kind of boxed in there by Kyrie Brown and others. But he saw that the sideline was there, and he stopped himself two feet away and cut back left, back towards the middle of the field, stayed in bounds, and got the first down. We're down to 340 to go in today's game. RPI leading 38 to 12 over Ithaca. First and 10 RPI at the 25. Oh, 
RPI looks like, are they going into the victory formation? No. Not just yet, maybe a little early for that. It's still 320 left. Handoff goes to Kelly. Kelly cuts up field at 25. Kelly gets to the 20, and he has stopped there. So that's a pickup of five for RPI. Ithaca left with only one timeout. Now, if you're Ithaca, you joined the Liberty League. This is the third season in the Liberty League for Ithaca. One loss their first year to RPI here in Troy. One loss their second year, RPI in Ithaca. And now, after today, there'll be two losses this year to RPI again in Troy and to Union in Schenectady. So three of their four conference losses in three years have been in the Capital District. And one at home. They've only lost one game at home in three years in the league. They have two co-championships and no NCAA tournament berths to show for them. And the all-time series between these two teams, this is only the sixth time they've met. RPI, Ithaca won the first two. RPI has won the next three, looking like they'll make it four today. Pass finds Todd around the 18-yard line, and he is tackled there on second and five. That will make it third and three with 2.20 to go in today's game. So, again, it will be RPI four wins, Ithaca two in the all-time series, and all four of those now in a row for the engineers. Mom wants you to ring the bell. We will be well under two minutes to play by the time RPI snaps this ball. Actually, a rather quick going game here. We're at two and a half hours at this point. As RPI is going to get this down to under five seconds. On the play clock. On the play clock. 140 overall. And RPI, uh, RPI called a timeout. It's 142. 142 to go in the ball game. RPI just kind of grinding it down and running it out here. Uh, third down at the Ithaca 18. They're up 38 to 12. A minute 42 to go in the ball game. Uh, again, if you're tuning in late, you miss an incredible first half, an incredible first quarter for the Engineers. Best half of the season. Taking on 17th ranked Ithaca. Engineers took the opening kick, drove 68 yards for a touchdown, went up 7 0. Intercepted a pass, drove for another touchdown, went 14 0. Forced a fumble on the next kickoff, recovered that drove in for another touchdown and was up 21 to nothing before many of the fans could even get to the concession stand here. They came in as big underdogs against Ithaca. Ithaca, a team that was still looking to make the NCAA playoffs. That dream is going to end for the Bombers here today. And for RPI, it ensures a winning season. It'll be their sixth in a row. A nice silver lining on a in a season where you're hoping to do a little bit more, but still that's a lot to be proud of. Meishlin takes a direct snap and he will make it down near the 16, which is one yard short of a first down and with 136 to go, nope. The referee was about to tell them to, to rewind the clock and the official said no. Ithaca is going to call a timeout with 134 to go in today's game. That is the last timeout for Ithaca. Look, if you're RPI, just run this ball. If you don't get a first down, I think it's deep in their own territory. Uh, yeah. And it's, There's it's, 94 it's, seconds left, and, and it's, it's a 26-point 26 26 point lead. Ball game. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if, it, if 26 points has been done in this circumstance in football. I would, I'm, not, I'm not sure where I would put my money on that one, but if I had to, <laughs> whether or not it's happened, if I had to at that game, I would say no, this isn't going to happen. So that's the last timeout for Ithaca. RPI sending the offense out. Looks like Meishlin will be in the QB position. You have Burnett, another running back back there, and usually in these situations, he's your blocker. So Burnett is to Meishlin's right. You could even conceivably take a knee here and just let the clock run but I don't think they'll do that. Meisland takes the ball, and now he's going to throw left-handed end zone, and that's incomplete. He was going for Smith. I don't know if Meisland's actually left-handed, is he? I have not I, seen I, that I, before. They don't put that on the stat sheet. I, I, he's thrown the ball before, but I just happened to notice he threw it with his left hand. Uh, but it's incomplete in the end zone, so RPI turns it over on downs. And Nick Smith had both hands on the ball in the right far corner of the end zone, but got hit right as the ball came down and wasn't able to hold on to it so 
engineer's going for a little bit of icing on the cake there uh, on fourth down. But it falls incomplete, but no matter. Here we are with just a minute 29 to go in the ball game and RPI up 38 to 12 on what's going to be remembered as their signature win of this 2019 well, campaign. Well, unless they win next week. Well, I guess Arch, well, throws, and that's complete out to the 30-yard line. True. <laughs> that is true. This union arch oh, no. rival game. Incomplete at the 30-yard line. Pardon me, incomplete. Yes, yes. And they, again, they'll be taking on a, rank, a nationally ranked team. One of the differences being uh, that they'll be in Schenectady. And RPI, we should point out, has, will have gone undefeated at home and so far windless on the road. Germanario throwing on on second down, and that is caught at the 25-yard line by Cooney. Or the 24, they'll say. Uh, clock continuing to run, 1.10 to go here in today's game. Third down and about three. Germanario doesn't see anything downfield. Starts to run with the ball. He's going to keep it to the 30, to the 35. Germanario is stopped at the 37. That'll stop the clock on the first down with 53 seconds left in the game. Well, it's supposed to. Clock has started once again. And that's not the first time it's happened here in the second half, I've noticed. On first down at the 37-yard line, Germanario dishes it off short for Vito. Vito turns, gets caught from behind, and he stopped at the 44. 30 seconds left in the game. 38 to 12, RPI leading here in Troy. Gladney had to get back on side for a second down and three. Germanario, only, well, they've got four guys rushing. Now he finds somebody, that's Gladney, and Gladney lackadaisically steps out of bounds at the 46 to stop the clock with 14 seconds to go. Ball at the RPI 46. As we are nearing the end of today's game here in Troy, RPI up by 26, 14 seconds to go. Germanario rolls out to his right. Doesn't see anybody. Stays back there. Plenty of time. RPI's pass rush, kind of like a days ago. Now they're going to grab him and pull him down at the 38 of Ithaca as time expires here in Troy. It's over with here. RPI wins over Ithaca, 38 to 12. Well, how appropriate was that as a final play, Kurt? Uh, German Ario, a uh, terrific quarterback all season for Ithaca, going back to pass, not finding anyone open, having to sort of scramble for his life and getting sacked for a loss. In this case, it was C.J. Shoemaker. But uh, engineers dominated from start to finish, as we mentioned. Uh, scored on their first drive, was up seven to nothing. Turnovers uh, in the first half, a, a, an interception, a fumble, all of a sudden they were up 21 to nothing and the route was on. The keys to this, a couple of things. One is the defensive line uh, from the first snap had incredible pressure on Ithaca quarterback Jack Germanario the entire time. It seemed like he was never comfortable back there, never was able to establish anything in the air, uh, scrambling for his life most of the time. On the other side of the ball, what did we see? We saw RPI variety and misdirection. A lot of short passes, a lot of uh, fake the play one way and take the hand off the other way. Uh, a, a lot of keeping Ithaca guessing. Also, energy and body language. RPI came out really fired up from the kickoff. A lot of, uh, a lot of fire on, uh, by the players on offense and defense. A lot of energy on the sideline. Ithaca, meanwhile, looked like it was in a fog from the kickoff. I mean, that first drive that RPI uh, took to start the game and marched all the way down and scored, I, I mean, it seemed like Ithaca was missing two tackles on every play. The Bombers kind of caught between a uh, disappointing loss last week and a big game next week, seemed in a fog all day. Never got out of the funk they were in in that first quarter, and this was just a route early on and a convincing win, and to date, the best win of the year for the RPI engineers. Mistakes early were critical against Ithaca. The turnovers in that first half. You know, you went through the sequence, RPI touchdown, turnover on the subsequent Ithaca drive, RPI touchdown, turnover on the kickoff, RPI touchdown. You've got two key mistakes. First quarter, 
that got RPI up 21-0 at the end of the first quarter. Uh, you take away those mistakes, who knows what the score is at the end of the first quarter. Now you, you've got that mental thing. You've got lost to Union last week. You were on the road. I think I'm talking about Ithaca here. On the road, uh, but higher ranked, and I think they were confident they could win that game. They did not, and they made mistakes in that game. They're, they made costly mistakes in the Union game to lose. They've now come out against RPI. We're talking first quarter here. Costly mistakes, put some three scores down. You, you, mentally, we don't know what was going on in the players at that point, but it didn't look good. Uh, it, it just They it, were in a fog. They, they, they just fog, didn't yeah. look good over there. The, the second quarter better, but they give up 10 points, score none. Now they're down 31 to nothing. Can you come back when you're down 31 to nothing at the half? Yes. Does it happen a lot? No. Uh, it doesn't happen usually hardly ever. Uh, it can happen, but now you've got to score. And you've got to score right from the start, and they don't. Uh, they they do score one. They did score once in the third quarter, but you needed to score more. And then RPI basically got that one back again, and then Ithaca scored late. It's, uh, you know, it's. What did Yogi Berra say? Ninety percent of the game is half <laughs> mental, or something like that. There, there's a lot of mental going on around here, and uh, you want to score early. This is almost the opposite of the St. Lawrence game when RPI lost, and they were down 35 nothing at one point. Uh, was RPI better than 35 nothing? Yes. But mentally, were they in that game when St. Lawrence was up 28 nothing at the half? I'm not sure they were entirely in that game at that point. And that can be that can be costly, and that can end the game for you. Yep, yep. There's a lot of mental going on around here. I'm going to write that down, Kurt, that you said that. I'm going to save that, that quote. Um, oh, you know, besides, as you mentioned, they lost a big game to Union last week, which was essentially the conference championship game. Also, next week, we mentioned this earlier, but Ithaca is playing arch rival Cortland, which is always a big game, but they're playing it at MetLife Stadium where the Jets and Giants play. They've sold 40,000 tickets for this game. This is going to be the experience of a lifetime for Division Three players. It's, it's very conceivable that they were also looking ahead to that game. It's going to be a, a, a big experience for both of those teams, Ithaca and Cortland. So maybe Ithaca looking ahead and overlooking RPI. And that's why they ended up with a, a decisive loss here, 38 to 12. And we say that, and let's flip the other side. RPI, first quarter, everything was done right. Mm -hmm. Just everything right, in comparison to really what the last few weeks were for RPI. Uh, a vastly different game, first quarter, and then expanded out to the first half. You know, once you're up 31-0, you're playing it differently after that. It's difficult to gauge exactly how our team's playing if you're up by 31 points and you're, you're, you know, you're, you're willing to give up a little bit more. It's not a tight game. So the second half is tough to gauge. But that first half was absolutely exceptional by RPI today. Best half of football all year. And, and, and not just passing the ball. They're usually successful passing the ball, running the ball in that, those first three drives. Uh, the line was opening up a lot of holes. Uh, Burnett and Scaglione breaking a lot of tackles. Poor tackling also for Ithaca. But, uh, you know, a lot of misdirection in the passing game as well. Fakes to the, you know, look to the left, screen set to the right, those sorts of things. Um, I, I, I was keeping track for a while, but I didn't mark it down. RPI was, I think, all the way into the second quarter before they had a single play that went for negative yardage. Uh, just everything seemed to be working in that first quarter. Okay, I'll run down the scoring for you in today's game. It was... RPI early and often, first quarter, 10.40 left to go on the first drive. Meisler with a 26-yard pass from Marinopoulos. Christian's kick made it 7-0 RPI. Then with 5.52 to go after an interception, RPI Lombardi with a one-yard run. Christian's kick made it 14-0 RPI. And then after RPI got a fumble on a kickoff return by Ithaca, Munoz watched with a two-yard run with 3.05 to go in the first quarter. Christian's kick made it 21-0 RPI. That was a score after one quarter. Second quarter, it took a little while for RPI to score again, but with 3.16 to go, Christian with a 33-yard field goal made it 24 to nothing. And then with one second left to go in the half, after RPI got the ball back again on an interception, it was McDonald with a 17-yard pass from Aaronopoulos. Christian's kick made it 31 nothing. That was the score at halftime. Third quarter, Ithaca got a touchdown. Gladney, a five-yard pass from German Ario. The pass attempt failed and it was 31-6 RPI at that point. That was the score after three quarters. Fourth quarter, RPI got another touchdown. Meischlin, a six-yard pass from Marinopoulos. Christian's kick made it 38-6, and the final score of the game was 7.04 to go. Gladney with a 21-yard pass from German Ario. The pass attempt failed on the conversion. That made it 38-12 in RPI's favor, and that would be the final here in today's Liberty League contest. RPI 38, 
Ithaca 12, RPI with the win improves to 6-3 and three overall, guarantees a winning season this year. They are 3-2 and two in the conference. Ithaca with the loss, uh, essentially out of NCAA contention at this point. They are now 7-2 and two overall. They are 4-2 and two in the conference. They are done with Liberty League action for RPI. Next Saturday, they are at Union for the Dutchman Shoes game. That is a noon start in Schenectady. For Cortland, they are playing, as we've mentioned a few times already today, or pardon me, for Ithaca, they are playing Cortland at MetLife Stadium. That is a 1 o'clock start next Saturday for the Ithaca Bombers. For the Bombers, they need to look, they need to do what RPI had to do after losing to Hobart and St. Lawrence in a row, find a way to turn their season around. For Ithaca, same thing. Lost to Union, lost to RPI. Can they turn this around and win against Cortland and then perhaps uh, go to a postseason game after that? They've got to look to, to themselves and try to get out on the field and play better than they've played for the last two weeks. Engineers of the game. Well, on offense, a lot of candidates to choose from, but we're going to say Mark Meishlin, the receiver, who had five catches for 90 yards and two touchdowns, even including a 32-yard catch. Uh, he seemed to be the right place at the right time, uh, ran good routes, was the open guy a couple of times when uh, Marinopolis was in trouble. Also want to just quickly shout out to Vinny McDonald, another senior who had a terrific game. Just two catches for 40 yards, but one of them went for a touchdown. And McDonald also had a halfback pass for a completion uh, in the first half. It's 32 yards to Meichelin. Um, defensively, again, who to pick from? Everyone seemed to have a terrific game. I'm going to say Amichi Conquo, one of the defensive ends, because he really set that tone in the first half, had a couple of uh, block passes at the line of scrimmage, which really fired up the line. He ended up with five tackles. He led the team in tackles for lost yardage with 20. Uh, John Sadak leading the team, it seems, as usual, in tackles with eight. But the defensive player of the game will say Amichi Conquo. And that will be it for us here from the East Campus Stadium today. We would like to thank our staff back at the station for making sure we got out on the airwaves. We would like to thank the Rensselaer Union. They provide the funding for WRPI and all the club-related activity of the Institute, and that includes WRPI's coverage of engineer football, hockey, and baseball. Uh, also a reminder, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to WRPI.org, and you can pick up our broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As long as we're sending something over the ether of the air, we'll provide it for you on that feed. That is WRPI.org. As we are here, they are reconfiguring the field to for soccer. The Liberty League semifinals are coming up at 4 o'clock today. That is the next event here at the East Campus Stadium. So there are RPIs playing soccer at 4, and then the other semifinal, I believe, is at 7 o'clock tonight. The final will be... Uh, tomorrow here at the East Campus Stadium. So that is happening as we are sitting here watching. So they're actually moving things more rapidly off the field than they usually do after a football game. Our next sports broadcast is tonight. That's a 7 o'clock puck drop, 6.45 airtime. RPI versus Clarkson just nearby at the Houston Fieldhouse. Our next football broadcast is next Saturday from Frank Bailey Field in Schenectady. It'll be RPI versus Union in the Dutchman Shoes game as RPI if, they, if Union holds on, they're leading 10-0 over Utica right now in the third quarter. If Utica can't come back in that one and Union wins, it'll be Union, an undefeated team, going up against RPI. will be playing an undefeated team next Saturday. Uh, RPI trying to damage Union like Union damaged RPI last year in the last game of the regular season before you go into the NCAA tournament. It'll be a rivalry game, and we'll see what happens next week. That'll be noon next Saturday. We'll be on the air bringing you RPI football. That'll be RPI versus Union. Also, the other game in the Liberty League, St. Lawrence leads Rochester 34-12 to in the third quarter. It looks like St. Lawrence is going to win that one. Rochester will remain winless going into their game against Hobart next week. So that's what's going on for Out of Town. My name is Kurt Sutt. To my right today was Yancey Roy bringing you all the action in today's Liberty League football contest where we had a final score here from the East Campus Stadium in Troy, New York. It was RPI 38. Ithaca 12, we'd like to thank you for listening. And you've been listening to live coverage of Engineer Football on 91.5 FM, WRPI.